I apparently have not got any of my buttons configured. Okay, phew, we did it. We did it in the nick of time. We have the buttons configured. <laughs> you know the drill every time you use a new emulator, like, ugh. Anyway, three, two, one. Hello, wow, that was a good clap. Hello, everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the BNS stream today on this fine 16th of September 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week and we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, happy widescreen day. It is a, that's a, not really a, a day, but because, you know, 16 by 9 is a resolution or it's a it's an aspect ratio of monitors and uh, lots of television content and things like that. That's what makes it... Uh, as, as a day, I guess. Even though that there's lots of other aspect ratios, like 4x3, or 5x4, or 16x10, or uh, the elusive 16x18. Look up that one monitor. Sup, Fetty? How's it going? Um, but yeah, no. My week's been uh, another week, another chaotic week. No forget. Only Remba. Only Remba. No forget. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no. It's, it's been, it's been, it's been fun and hectic, but there's, there's been quite a good amount of just stuff going on and things happening. Uh, I'd like to... Well, actually, let, rather than that, let's hop into it, because I know some people really want me to like, get to the game sooner, so I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna do it! Here we go, okay. Whoop! It's me, Mario! It's him, Mario! Hello! There we go. We're playing Mario 64, which is a game that sort of needs no introduction. I think a ton of people will always say Mario 64 is a you know, a greatest game of all time. Uh, and I think definitely anytime anyone makes claims like that, they should always be held to some scrutiny. I think some games are elevated to a higher status than necessarily they need to be. But I think Mario 64 definitely deserves a lot of great praise for what it is. Um, certainly though, I think a lot of people who say it is one of the tightest or best design 3D platformers um, there's a lot of other really good examples around its time, um, and certainly some of it has aged a bit. <laughs> this is this is how I say Yoshi's Island is flawless. Yoshi's Island is very flawless. Well, it Yoshi's Island is bound to the whole getting you know like don't lose Mario on your back kind of mechanic, and depending on how much you like that, that will shape your enjoyment of the game. Mario 64, I think. Any complaints people have, it's very fleeting. It's like, this doesn't apply to a lot of it. Or if it does, it's like, well, it's, it's not that much of a problem. We got this cool kind of title screen where you can uh, realize that your controller is upside down. Oh yeah, my controller is upside down. <laughs> is that gonna, that's gonna, oh, that's gonna, that's gonna come into play here. Hold on, we're gonna do the tricky strat of unplug the controller, replug it. And then wonder why Retroarc automatically pauses itself. No, it's upside down. What's going on? Ah, dang it. Every time, I, every time I turn off Retroarc and turn it back on, it panics. It's just like things change. So hold on, give me a hot second to quickly fix this up. It's just got the input upside down for some reason. Like the stick is going the wrong way. So if I just go port three and we go like stick axis up is that. Yeah, no, that seems right. Accidental challenge run. Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it's just up and down seemed wrong. So I'm just double checking that I've got that right. Y up. That makes sense, but it's all upside down. Well, we'll, we'll dive into it. We'll just see what's going on. So uh, I keep starting new save files, but note that the 16 uh, arc... Oh, I never know if it's Arc or Arches. Because there's Arc like Arc... Well, it's Arch Linux. Maybe it is Arch. What is the Arch? I never know. I'm gonna be that guy. I've, I've been saying it wrong my whole life. I've been saying it wrong in like 50 million streams. Oh no. <laughs> it's the worst. Um, but yeah, no, Mario 64 has a, has a dear place in my heart because I never grew up at all with a Nintendo 64. But I had played it once in passing, and then uh, my cousin had Super Mario 64 DS, and uh, that was when I learned the wonderful story of envy. Envy is a sin. Do not have envy. Uh, so I, uh, I I was a, a dirty thief, and I stole as yeah controls upside down. Hold on, left and right seem okay. C stick is ah. 
I figured it out. I figured it out. Uh, so, hold on. I figured it out, and that is because there are two controllers going simultaneously right now. So for some odd reason... There you go, that makes a lot more sense. So for some odd reason it was uh, using the inputs of the wrong thing, because when I was adjusting the camera just then I was like, Oh, why am I punching at the same time? There we go. Um, but yeah, no, I, uh, I was a dirty thief, and I <laughs> stole my cousin's Mario 64 to play it myself. And uh, I was a jerk, and I deleted a save file in order to do that. Uh, and he was very upset, and I learned the wonderful deed of don't steal things from people, especially your family. So, hopefully, I, I, I don't know, my cousin's probably forgiven me by now. Um, Mario 64 uh, needs no introduction. You go into the castle and you got lots and lots of uh, worlds, 15 worlds to be exact, with lots of, uh, oh, I, yeah, yeah, no, that, that was a, that was a coal year, yeah. Um, it's got 15 worlds, each consists of uh, six stars and a wonderful seventh star when you collect a hundred coins. Wow, you're smack in the, in the middle of the battlefield. You'll find the power stars that Bowser stole inside the penning worlds. First, first talk to the Bobon buddy. Press B to talk. He'll certainly help you out. And so will his comrades in other areas. To read signs, stop, face them, and press B. Press A or B to scroll ahead. You can talk to some other characters by facing them and pressing B. There's lots of little characters to talk to, but that's definitely one thing that Mario 64 does very differently to other Mario games is that you can stop and talk people will give you some story which doesn't seem to apply to most of the game but certainly bits of it um so yeah this is just vanilla Mario, Mario 64 the biggest reason is because I wouldn't really be able to do justice to uh the um the DS features just yet so uh we're gonna leave that for a later date but I think regular Mario 64 is uh perfectly fine to play through. And I love these signs as well. Like, I know it's like, oh, it's very tutorial -esque, but when you think about it, this is a very natural transition of exactly what Mario World was. It is lore, yes. But this is a very natural transition of that 2D Mario into some kind of 3D space. Uh, for the most part. It starts to get a little interesting once you have to start dealing with enemies that particularly only dealt with you in a 2D context, and now they're suddenly here in a 3D world. So you can either jump on them, like, you know, all time's sake, oh my gosh, uh, or you can punch them, you've got a punch button. Um, Speedrun for reading all the signs, oh really? Um, a bit of draw distance fun as well. Um, but you'll notice a lot of stuff around. Uh, I'm gonna do the stars in a generally, you know, in order, order, but I'll go all over the place, we'll try and figure it out. Uh, your main goal with, um, uh, the game is, yeah, you pick up every, it's about half an hour long. I'm not that good. I, I can do, I have done a, um, a 16 star run. Um, I cannot seem to do the MIP skip from memory, so I'm probably gonna need to, like, use some reference material to help guide that, but, uh, the back was long jump, easy source. Easy source. Uh, I always keep noting that if you stand in there, there's a little secret, but I'll show it off in a, in a later star. Um, but yeah, no, you go into these worlds, you've got, like, these decently large environments. Like, one of the nice things as well is that the draw distance isn't too close. It's like, yeah, it's kind of there. And certainly there's elements that are fading away, but, like, you can see the bridge and the start of the level. It's all good. Um... And there's certainly lots to do and lots to see, and even this whole intro section gives you this nice little tutorial of just like all these individual things. Um, like these recovery parts and health and all that stuff. Um, that's good fun. Mario 64 has a lot of fun for a lot of different aspects, so. And certainly as well, hold on. I'm the big bob lord of all blasting matter, king of kabooms the world over. How dare you scale my mountain? By what right do you set foot on my imperial mountain top? You may have eluded my guards, but you'll never escape my grasp. And you'll never take away my power star. I hereby challenge you, Mario. If you want the star I hold, you must prove yourself in battle. Can you pick me up from the back and hurl me to this royal turf? I think you, that you cannot. That's so good fun. That's such good fun. Anyway, uh, yeah, so immediately you start off with a boss. Um, also, I, just take a step back. Remove your any nostalgia for this game if you have it. This is the first thing that, like, most players are gonna, like, experience in Mario 64, which I think is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> you run around this sprite of a sphere that doesn't even rotate, because that's how you express it, it's super round. It just... It's round. 
man on top is uh, Imperial, why isn't he Emperor? That is true, it should be a kingdom. Anyway, throw in three times. What? What? Can it be that a pipsqueak like you has defused the Babom King? You might be fast to ground, uh, fast enough to ground me, but you'll have to pick up the pace if you want to take King Bowser by the tail. Methinks my troops could learn a lesson from you. Here is your star, as I promised, Mario. If you want to see me again, select the star from the menu. For now, farewell. <laughs> and then he explodes into a bajillion triangles, because triangles are the only thing that you can do in 3D. Uh. Definitely as well, Mario 64 is home to a lot of wonderful elements, uh, most notably this is the, uh, and then he becomes a dud, yes. <laughs> um, you recover one of the stars. Uh, you unlock a lot of worlds right off the bat, but I'm gonna take a couple of extra stars in, um, the, uh, the first world here. So first of all, when you do your foot race with Koopa the Quick, I believe you can talk to this bob now. Hi. And then he opens up the cannons. A lot of the levels have cannons. You just gotta talk to someone, one pink bob -omb somewhere, and maybe after a certain star, and it'll open up for you. But you don't particularly need it in this one, and in fact, I think actually, if you do use it, he tells you off for doing it. Or it's just really slow. Limbless corpse rot, that is true. Hey Mario, is it true that you beat the big bob -omb? Cool. You must be strong and pretty fast. So how fast are you anyway? Fast enough to beat me, Cooper the Quick? I don't think so. Just try me. How about a race at the mountaintop where the big the big bob -omb was? What do you say? When I say go, let the race begin. Ready, go. <laughs> and then you got a wonderful time and everyone's favorite song. Hey, okay. <sighs> I'm gonna I'm gonna keep gushing about this game. Fastest blinking right here is a fast blinker. Um, there are a lot of fun routes that, uh, speedrunners absolutely love this game, for a lot of reasons. This game is very, very free to do whatever you want, and it's not particularly a bad, like, way of playing this. Like, you could crawl up that hill on the left if you want. Uh, I'm gonna show off the, uh, warp, the little warp, which is a, a general way of going about it. You see me do this as well, this is just you jumping and then you hit me, and instead of, like, punching in the air, you kind of do that. I think if you let go of the, uh, stick, Mario does a kick. It depends on what you're doing, I think. Because you can do the kick kind of soon. Stand in here and Mario will just disappear. And then you'll appear just somewhat up the mountain. And you can do this uh, fun little jump where you flick the stick back. There's lots of little movement tricks. You got a, uh, a backflip. You got the long jump. You got the triple jump. Uh, double jump. <laughs> I couldn't pull off the triple jump. There's so many cool things. Um, certainly as well, to gush about this game at its time of release, uh, which was, when was it, May or June 1996? I think June 1996. Uh, it was a launch title for the Nintendo 64, which doesn't seem like, you know, like, oh, launch title, okay, sure. Also, woo, you're really fast, a human blur, here you go, you've won it fair and square. And it gives you a star. You'll notice a lot of these stars, like, sometimes aren't, like, introducing so many brand new elements, unlike, uh, Mario Galaxy later, which would really really go ham on just every single level every single star is going to have its own kind of element to it this one hey you know you got so many worlds we put in all this effort into these worlds um so given that we've got the uh the the cannons unlocked we should be able to go up and get this next star pretty easily um you sort of do have to explore around these levels and really figure out what's going on though uh and especially as your first playthrough, it's going to be quite interesting. I always hate running up this thing. I don't know why, I always struggle. Um, but uh, here's a cannon, this is a fun little mechanic after you've uh, you know, revealed it. All you got to do is just aim up at the sky and hit A and hope that your trajectory is alright. But usually aiming directly up at this island gets you up here. Once you're up here, you just hit this one block and the secret is revealed to you. So there you go. Uh, but as a Nintendo 64 launch title, you get to basically do the whole what does this hardware mean in terms of the world around it. And I think that's probably where most of Mario 64's praise comes from, was not necessarily the game, but I think as a showcase of this hardware. We're going to completely ignore doing 8 red coins, by the way. I'm going to get that one star that you can keep seeing in the corner of your screen right there. Um... Because uh, you don't have to do the stars in order, but sometimes you do. It depends. Sometimes when you pick the star, different things change in the uh, in the level. Um, for the most part, this whole level is fine, but obviously Koopa the Quick is only visible when Koopa the Quick's there. Also, Chain Chomp, absolute classic enemy. Oh, 
classic enemy. If you do three ground pounds on this post before the chain chomp comes back and bites you, oh, actually, it doesn't matter if he comes back and bites you, he's free! And then he's gonna <laughs> ram this fence. They are, yeah, the levels are very complex. Um, in terms of like hardware, obviously, the Nintendo 64 has, uh, uh, I was gonna say bilinear filtering, it's not quite bilinear filtering, I think the algorithm's a little different. But it does have texture filtering, which, uh, at the time you didn't really see except for arcade games like Daytona USA. Um, obviously the Nintendo 64, like, when you look at it today, it's like, there's something a bit hilarious about the blurriness of some of these textures, like, a lot of these textures are just kind of noisy, but, when you compare it to a lot of PS1 games, it's like, at a distance, it looks really nice. Uh, and this is running at um, original resolution, because I know lots of N64 emulators don't run at the right resolution. They just go, ah, 640 by 480, call it a day. It's like, that's not, uh... <laughs> that's, what, that's not what it outputs, that may be what it renders at, and then it does like a bit of anti-aliasing, also anti-aliasing. Which does lead to nice smooth uh, visuals, and especially if you kind of blur your eyes a little bit, that's sort of how it feels like on the um, Nintendo 64. Or if you're watching this in YouTube and you just change the resolution like that. We're in the second level now, but we haven't done the entirety of the first level. Hello! The Lakitu Bros cutting in with a live update on Mario's progress. He's about to learn a technique for sneaking up on enemies. The trick is this. He has to walk very slowly in order to walk quietly. And wrapping up filming techniques reported on earlier, you can take a look around by using the C buttons and press C down to view the action from a distance. When you can't move the camera any farther, the buzzer will sound. This is the Lakitu Bros signing off. I love that, like, the camera in the bottom, like, you see La the Lakitu picture, um, it's just a Lakitu who's holding the camera the whole time, which is very nice. Uh, you can also hit L, and that goes to a, uh, a Mario camp sometimes, I guess, on this level. Uh, Wom's Fortress has a bunch of ways of getting up to the top. I'm gonna take the, uh, the boring way, but... Um, Jumping Flash is an interesting one. I think Tomb Raider is a very, like, at its time comparison as well. Um, oh. Story is great. Yeah, Jumping Flash is certainly, um, one of the, like, pinnacle, like, 3D platformers, I think, that should be cited. Um, Crash Bandicoot at the time as well. Uh, there's another one off the top of my head. I'm trying to remember it. I'll remember it later. Um... But yeah, you don't actually have to fight a lot of these enemies, but once you get to the top, uh, here is the one. It makes me so mad. We build your houses, your castles, we pave your roads, and you still walk all over us. Do you ever say thank you? No? Well, you're not going to wipe your feet on me. I think I'll crush you just for fun. Do you have a problem with that? Just try to pound me, wimp. Ha! Ah, that is a very, very interesting request. Now, the way you meant to fight this guy is you wander around him, let him crush, and then do that. Uh, speedrunners know that if you do a ground pound at the right point in your jump... Oh, not like that, though. We'll do it again. <laughs> if you do a ground pound at the right point in your jump, uh, Mario will just phase through the womp. It makes this fight a little quicker. Just a little bit. No, crushed again. I'm just a stepping stone after all. I won't gravel or grovel. Air you win. Take this with you. I love the dialogue. It's it's just so oh so good. Um, the other thing as well that I think really screams out like this is n what Nintendo 64 is about. And I think a lot of people forget about this, is that it has an analog stick. Like, when you think about it, did any game console have an analog stick out of the gate? The Atari 5200. There you go. There's your one example. But, like, this game made sure you knew it had an analog stick. We have a character who isn't bound to running straight forward. He could run at 30 degrees to the camera. He could walk slowly, like this. He can, um, well, that's kind of it, but, like, that's, you know, this analog stick is a real game changer. Uh, you can sort of shortcut your way through the level by jumping up here like that as well. The PS1 uh, had 3D, yeah, jumping flash, and the the PS1's analog stick, the dual analog controller, was not out until 97, which was a year after this game came out. I think a lot of people are very familiar with the dual shock as well, which was the year after. And certainly standardizing rumble is a fun feature. The Nintendo 64 didn't have that uh, standard. That was a add-in um, feature with, uh, Star Fox 64. Yeah, I know, you get up to the top of this level and suddenly there's this. Also, uh, bullet bills appear for basically one of two levels. 
Uh, Croc, yeah, Croc had tank control. A lot of them, uh, Jump and Flash had tank controls. Tomb Raider had tank controls. Um, yeah, tank controls were definitely the norm. Resident Evil had tank controls, which was also in 96. Um, lots of games had real interesting... Oh, the secret one up. Oh, yeah, when you punch the, the wall. I know it's there. the chat message came up late, but... Uh, follow back? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, no. Oh, no, the pressure's on to follow back. Uh, jumping Flash. Yeah, Jumping Flash makes sense. Um, somewhat, I feel like tank controls do work, but it does depend on what the platforming wants you to do. Mario 64 definitely wants you to be like, hey, the camera's back here. And generally, Mario's always had... I, I'm using my hands. I really should stop using my hands to gesture this kind of stuff. No one can see it. Um, Crash Bandicoot, I think, works very well despite not needing camera controls because the levels are designed around that one method, basically. Um, but this one, certainly, you need to be able to turn the camera, which they have the dedicated C buttons. You have your two A, B buttons. Um, you have an R button, which is... Oh, it's R. That's the button. There you go. I guess it makes more sense than L. Yeah, that whole left side of the controller is just not useful. I have the Italian spirit inside of me. Mamma mia. Uh, but yeah. Once Fortress, you can get all the stars. There is a mild bit of backtracking, if you remember, just like Mario World. Uh, there's this fun plank here. Which, uh, you could use. There's a lot of fun stuff like that. Although, I don't think I actually... I mean, this is for the red coins, which is nice to get. Oh, I might as well just get the red coins now. I'm just sort of in the, in the mindset for that. That was a good drop. Secret one up. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll go back for the secret one up. We'll do it. We'll do it. Uh, so you gotta sneak up on this guy, and then you can punch him, and that'll get him. Um, but yeah, the combination of the analog stick, the, um, the, the remarkable 3D graphics, like, certainly the cartridge would quickly become a very big limiting factor. Mario 64 remarkably fits in an 8 megabyte cartridge, but later Nintendo 64 games went up to, I think 64 megs was the tops. Um, ah, oh, dang it. I'm not very good at getting these, these, uh... Well, I'll have to tell you that. Um, hi there. Activate the cannon for me, please. There you go. I'm not going to use this right now, but... Blast off! Um, so as a heads up as well, uh, so every world has six stars. Uh, and uh, there's an extra seven star when you get a hundred coins. Uh, the 100 coin star doesn't boot you out of the level, which is a very interesting choice. I don't know why that's the case. Uh, there's lots of 3D coins here. 3D platformers are finally getting back in star. Oh yeah, I'm so glad that Astrobot is like actually taking off. I hope the sales for it are good, and I hope Sony doesn't kill it. And I really hope, as a wonderful segue, uh, that the PS5 Pro comes down in price because it is 1,200 Australian dollars. It is an incredibly expensive console 800 year yeah 800 euros 700 us dollars which isn't as bad but um one thing i noticed is that the ps4 pro when it came out uh was the same price as the regular ps4 when it came out uh, which was 400 us i've forgotten the australian price but i think it was like 750 or 800 australian um the supply for the ps4 pro wasn't very good though over here so it's sort of um it floundered a little bit oh, oh. i'm sorry that's right because i'm doing some rather risky jumps near me um if you're okay with the ps5 yeah 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 the pro i think i think having pro in the name you know nowadays with marketing uh there's a lot of pro items that are like oh they're excessive like the iphone pro and uh um i think the vive pro was one uh, you can also crouch if you don't trust the analog stick. Or if you're using a uh, non-analog stick kind of device. And you can do this wonderful dance. Um, there you go. That's 100 coins. And there you go, there's a star. Um, so when you pick up the 100 coin star, uh, it says you've collected 
100 coins, and then you can save there and just continue the level. So, there's lots more coins. Uh, if you ever play on Retro Achievements, uh, there's a subset, which used to be part of the main set. We're grabbing every single coin in the level, which sounds okay, but there are some, like, I mean, you saw the 1-Up go crazy. Yeah, there's more things that go crazy than just that 1-Up. Um, so, uh, even Sony admitted 75% of players prefer, prefer performance over fidelity mode. Um, I think the pro is, like, the main thing I, I think I want to see out of it is, um, that currently, perf uh, fidelity isn't, I don't want to say it's not what is advertised, because it's like, well, it really does depend on the game. Um, but also it depends on the, uh, the, what am I, what am I saying? I, it's a 4K console that doesn't actually pull 4K a lot of the time. Also, uh, it is... There. There you go. <laughs> a lot of the one-ups are very, very tricky and hidden. Um, okay, how many coins am I at? Seven. Where? Oh, which one's the one I'm missing? It's up my head. Mario, you are not falling. Uh... Which one is the coin? Oh, that one. <laughs> Easy. Uh, they don't have cheat votes for getting max coins in the secret. That is true. That is true. It's not a complete subset. It's not complete. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. Every every world does have a red coin and a hundred coin star, so... You're gonna need to eventually prep for those. They're not too bad, except for, um... Uh... Die Die Docks. Doesn't have a lot of coins. That gets a bit iffy. Um, and the castle, yeah, yeah. Alright, shoot into the wild blue. So, I haven't... <laughs> we sort of jumped the gun with doing the next star, but... Nice. Um, but yeah, no, uh, 1200 bucks is a lot. I see the value in that. I'm not saying you should get a PS5 Pro, because, first of all... How many games are you buying for that thing, really? But I do think that it is a decent... A very good uplift. Uh, you just... Oh wait, sorry. Wild Blue is, um, this one. You gotta aim for, like, specifically this... Okay, so you see how there's, like, four poles there? Aim for the, like, this one, which is the far end. And then just sort of, like, aim up towards, uh... You gotta sort of know how far up you aim. Uh, I'm gonna say that much. There you go. That's usually what I do. You could technically do a jump from down below, but I like doing that. That seems to be a very reliable way of getting that done. Um, oh yeah, most players shouldn't get a PS5 Pro because the games really should work on the PS5. And on top of that, since the architecture is basically the same for the games themselves, are sort of the same as the PS4. Like, from 2013. We still haven't changed that much. The uh, games are arbitrarily not working on the PS4. Like, or not arbitrarily, as in they're just pushing way too much stuff and they don't bother with making it, you know, run on a PS4. But it's not because the PS4 is such a different architecture that they have to rethink it. It's purely the PS4 won't run fast enough. Like, it's a lot simpler of a case than before. Um, by the way, yeah, this owl appears in a couple of levels and this is always a high... Oh, I hate that. I hate that. You saw that happen where it's like you try to let go and it just... Oh. There's a couple, there's a couple of ways you can get that done, but I, I like doing it like that, other than you have to wait for the owl the next time. He comes back, eventually. There you go, you can see him. Oh, I get it. <laughs> um, they showed some PS4 games. I'm, I'm very curious how PS4 games... Like, they should... PS4 games really should be running at 4K at this point. On the PS5, let alone the PS5 Pro. Uh, okay, am I above it? Oh. There you go. It's a bit of a weird platform. Um, diminishing returns. Yeah, yeah, there's a bit of that. And I think the... Yeah, one point is that in their blog posts, the main reason why you'd get the PS5 Pro is that it has 45% more graphics performance as they advertise. 45% more graphics performance, um, like, is like, oh, you know, that's really good. But just remember, 4K compared to 1080p is four times the number of pixels. You need 400% of the performance, uh, roughly, because it's not, I know, it's... Yeah. 
it, when it's purely ver uh, fragments, when it's purely pixels, then yeah, you need four times the grunt. But obviously there's triangles and things in the scene that are not done in post. You just have to know, by the way, that you uh, break that and potentially take a hit. I think that's a potential. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and on top of that, we're not developers, and also I sort of expect the PS5 games, or really any consoles games, to run at you know, a, an appropriate frame rate for the console. I don't expect them to lag that much. So when it's like it's 45% more graphics horsepower, what does that necessarily mean? Well, the easiest way I can say is that if the, um, if the PS5 performed like a, um, I think a 5600X, uh, did it have XC in its name? Around that performance, uh, I've jumped into this level again, but we've actually done all seven stars, so I can leave now. Uh, once you've hit ten stars, you'll notice that it's very bright. Look up towards the sky, and we enter one of the secret courses in this game. There are fifteen secret stars hidden around the castle somewhere, and some of these have some extra little features in them. Uh, this one teaches you about the wing cap, uh, and it's a safe space. So if you fall, you just sort of fall back to you know, the castle. You don't actually die here. Um, oh, it's eight. It's eight. Okay, my bad. It's eight stars. Oh. But you do want to get all the um, all the coins here. You can go back, ish, a little bit, but you don't want to waste too much time. There you go. And then you need a ah. Oh, that's that's why. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's eight stars for Bowser. I think it's ten for the wing cap. Uh, also remember to hit the switch. It's like Mario World. And this activates all these red blocks around the level. And if you picked up all eight uh, coins as well, you get a star for your work. Here we go! Uh, we're already 12 stars in. I don't know how many streams this is going to be. It may be two streams. Because I know this game like the back of my hand. Uh, we're going to go back to bob -on Battlefield now. It's 15 for Bowser. Is it? No, it's- yeah, sorry, it is 8 for Bowser. What's 15 then? It's 15 for Mips, that's what it is. Uh, so we're gonna do 100 coins here and also get the, uh, 8 red coins, uh, in the process as well. Um... There's lots of little fun boxes and just things that spew coins in their own way. Like, this box is just going. It's going. It's really going. Wow. And now it's gone. <laughs> um... So, yeah, so if the, uh, the, uh, PS5 performed like a 5600 XT, I think the PS5 Pro will perform like a 6700 XT, uh, which is a GPU from a bit ago because it is still RDNA 2, actually, I think it was RDNA 2 graphics back then, so maybe it was like a 6600, maybe that was the comparison. Um, now, for... And this, this is the other kind of thing, is that it's 1200 Australian, which is a lot of money for a game console full stop. Uh, but can you just build a PC that's equivalent in spec? And the answer is... It's close, but not quite in Australia. It might be a little, you know, worse in America for building a PC, but obviously there's pre as well that sometimes are much cheaper. Graphics weren't exactly the main issue with the PS5. Uh, the PS5's got a few other problems, although I think the graphics have been a general issue of this console gen. There's been a lot of, like, games where it's like they are pushing way too hard, and it's not even a ray tracing thing as well. They're just, they're just insane. Like, just optimize the heck out of this, guys. Like, what, what's going on here? Uh, I think this is a warp, this flower. Yeah, this flower is a warp. If you didn't know, now you know. Uh, this Cooper, if he uh, would please get off the wall, because he's going to drop a coin, and I really don't want him to be there. That just seems... That's the most inconvenient place you could be, man. Just... Okay, we'll just come back for him. Mental note. He's got a coin. Uh, obviously, as well, I've, I've went around this conversation, and it's like... Uh, what PS5 games are you even going to play? Because a lot of them are on PC, which you can also just build for an equivalent price, and also you won't lose your games. Right, I want to turn the camera a little bit. 
Okay, it's very adamant and making me do this instead. Of <laughs> the camera's not amazing in this game. Um, having the ability to just like control it right off the, you know, all the time is a very powerful thing, and I think that's actually a, a part a lot of people lose when they play it on uh, an emulator that, or a controller, rather, that doesn't have uh, six buttons. Is that you'll actually, you do lose that feeling of just like, yeah, the camera controls are right there. Uh, something some others have pointed out with better architecture is that they could very well keep the graphics the same, but make them more smooth, and said the devs will take this as the new minimum. That is always a worry. Does this spew coins when you run around it? No, not this, oh, this one does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, can I get that last one? Because sometimes the coins disappear. Alright, that's a fun trick, by the way. Because there's some other uh, posts in the level that uh, spit out five coins when you ground pound them. Um, but you can also run around them and it spits out the coins. That one will not spit out the coins when you ground pound it, so you have to run around it. Here's the part with the uh, other posts. There's four of these posts as well. Um, I do agree. I, or, I mean, it's more a... Uh, like a prediction, but I do agree that I feel that devs are going to set that as the baseline. Um, because the consoles have been the baseline for a while. Once people stopped, you know, really trying to support the PS4 in 2022 or so, games really started to just be like, yep, yeah, no, nope, we're running terribly now, all of a sudden. Um, seriously, like, lots of the games that people pointed out, like The Last of Us, I know, right? The Last of Us was a PS3 game, why is it running terribly on PC, and it's like, because it's just made for that one piece of hardware, and then they just decided to just straight port it over. 360 version of Black Ops 3? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wii U version of Black Ops 3 didn't come out, they only did <laughs> Black Ops 2 and Ghost, didn't they? Cheap viewers? Oh my goodness, wow! You hear that? <laughs> We're cheap, cheap viewers. Oh my gosh, that coin is gone. Uh, I think the other one's gone. Done. That's okay. I I think that's actually like real interesting that it had the PS3 version or the Xbox 360 version as well because like no Wii U version. The Wii U was was a done console, and yet somehow it's like oh, not 360. Call of Duty on the Wii is interesting, but they're also built as different games. Um, I'm trying to think of another one as well, where it's like... I know a lot of the, the, the LEGO video games had like DS versions as well, which were like fairly, fairly alright like recreations of the, the regular games. Like the LEGO Star Wars ones had the whole game like kind of there, I think. So, there's a lot of good examples of like, hey, you've got the inferior hardware, but you can still make it work. Um, oh, I hate the water. I hate the water. It's meant to test you on the shadows. There's a lot of like, faith in just understanding 3D as well, because a lot of people do struggle with 3D in terms of like the, you know, the screen. The two used to like, oh, it's, it's 2D, it's things moving across the screen. And it's actually like a very different skill set to just like be able to perceive the depth and really like understand the 3D space you're looking at, especially because uh, 3D is a lie. I just want to say that. What you're looking at is a very, very smart mathematical algorithm that converts triangles into uh, screen space coordinates and just so happens to give it perspective that looks accurate enough. Which is a very nerdy way of saying it, but like the, the easiest thing is if you've ever played a game on an ultra wide monitor, which is great on this fine widescreen day 169. Uh, I think if you walk up this and you just like hold the stick forward, you will run up the slope just to grab this one coin. I should have done some coins on the ground first. So I, I, uh, I think I should be fine. Because, uh, yeah, for reference as well, your 100 coin star will appear directly above you as you collect your 100th coin. And if you're in a bit of a weird jump when that happens, yeah. Speaking about x Uh, but yeah, I, uh, PS5 Pro, the pricing is insane. I get it. Also, the PS5 itself hasn't gone down in price. In fact, it's gone up in price. And in Japan, it's gone up in price twice. They finally made the first Xbox One compatibility layer. Ooh, very nice. Very nice. 
Um, I think that's why the PS5 Pro is that expensive. Hi there, how are you doing? I don't know why we hate the black bob -ons. Can we just make peace? Doesn't run any games. Hey, uh, if it can run like the menu, or just perceivably like part of the boot sequence, that is good enough for a lot of, you know, like showcasing that, hey, yeah, you've gotten past the boot sequence. Finally, Halo 5. Yeah, <laughs> the one Halo that they didn't include in the. in any PC versions. Oh, we should have to hit 100 right here. Very nice. <laughs> that was... Ooh! 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 <laughs> Alright, let's get that one star down there. Um, I guess I didn't need the cap for that one. But you can sort of see what <laughs> what the cap will eventually be used for. Um, you know, we'll see how many stars I get in the, this whole stream. There's 120 in the game in total, so... I mean, remember, I've really only pushed my way through two worlds right now, and we've got one last star. Uh, uh, PS5 has about the same amount of exclusives as the Xbox One. Does the Xbox One have any exclusives other than Halo 5? I guess things that are older, I guess. So yeah, Halo 5, um, uh, Forza Motorsport 6 was like the first one, and it didn't quite have a full PC version. Um, uh, Rare Replay, I think, probably another big one. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, you don't need to include, like, I was gonna say Sneak King, but wrong generation. But still, you know what I mean, like... But, uh, yeah, like... It's a weird day and age that consoles don't have exclusives because that is the reason why you buy the console. Sony needs people. Well, do they? I don't know if they need it. Uh, grab the wing cap, go into the cannon, and you'll notice that if you aim sort of around, I think directly at this coin, you'll uh, float up and not quite. Not quite. I never get this right. You gotta hit the coins right in the middle of these rings. And they do count as coins, so if you need them for the 100 coin star, then you can. But. Uh, the draw distance on them is terrible. You are, you're really gonna have to guess where they are. It's a lot better in the DS version, I'll tell you that. You can keep picking up the cap, why not? Oh, we'll take another crack at that. I can send you my full list of Xbone exclusives. Ugh! That's why Mario's got a really wide turning circle. Go, and the other one's kind of... Oh, I got it! And it spawns right next to the other one as well. In the DMs. Hitting me up in the DMs. And there we go, that's Bob on Battlefield done. And that Goomba's seen better days. Mario wings to the sky. And let's save and continue. So that's Bob on Battlefield done. We have done two worlds. Uh, oh, true. Connectimals. Connectimals, my beloved. Uh, so, <laughs> despite there being World 1 on the leftmost, that's World 4, the stairs underneath the... Sorry, the doors underneath the bridge go onwards. But you can't go to World 5 back there. Uh, that's World 2. World 3 is over here. Uh, the ordering's all over the place, I know. Uh, now, peek your eyes over here. There exists a wonderful uh, pit over here, which teaches you about water. So, swimming is very, very natural in this game. There's a lot of games that don't get swimming right. This game gets swimming right. You just pitch Mario, point him in the way you want to go, or just turn him in the way you want. And uh, you can either hold A, and he swims a little bit, or a better strat of mash A, which is intended game design. Um, may I add as well, Mario 64 has one of the greatest soundtracks of any video game ever. I don't think there is any song that is a miss. Every single song is an absolute hood classic. The only thing I would add 
as like the I wish is that I wish there was more of it because uh, the ice levels have the same theme as Babon Battlefield, which has the same theme as three other levels. Multiple levels share the same music, and you'll sort of find it's like Persona One PSP. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one day I'll play a Persona. I'm playing through Fantasy Star Two right now, so that's my RPG focus at the moment. Um, that's a fairly straightforward one, other than uh, Call of Duty Ghosts. You know, fish are moving out of the way when I swim next to them. Check that out. That is such a tech demo moment, but I don't care. That's incredible. Uh, but yeah, what, what PS5 games are there? Astro Bot, um, if you're impatient for the Final Fantasy VII Remake, then sure. Um, for the second part, that is. Attention, read before diving in. If you stay under wa the water for too long, you'll run out of oxygen. Return to the surface for air, or find an air bubble, or coins to breathe while underwater. Press A to swim. Hold A to swim slow and steady. Tap A with smooth timing to gain speed. Yeah, there's actually a strat on that one as well. Where it's like, if you kick at the right speed, then you're good. Hold on, I'll, I'll get it. Yeah, it's kind of like that. That's how you go the quickest. Also, I love that when you're in the water, the strings kick in in this level. Or rather, when you're off the shore. And then, uh, when we go into the, uh, the secondary section as well, there's like a drum line that comes in. And this dynamic music is incredible. I wish that more games did it, but it's so iconic for Mario 64. Oh, and that one's gone. Uh, half of the PS5 exclusives of PSVR 2. I hate that PSVR is, um, uh, also as well, like, the first PSVR isn't, um, compatible with the second one. So are we doing plunder in the sunken ship? I'm doing them way out of order. Okay, this is a fun one as well. Touch the chest in the wrong order, you get zapped. What's the right order? It's top one, left one, right one, bottom one. It's because I know the order, that's why. <laughs> There's a bunch of coins next to you as well, so you can give yourself more goes than you'd want to, but uh, that one's a bit of a... Okay, sure, kind of guess the uh, the pattern. That's how you know I've played this game before, because I called that off the top of my head. Uh, let me just buy two PS5s to play the second half of exclusives. Or well, you don't have to buy a second PS5, but you have to buy two headsets. You have to buy the PSVR 1 headset to play PSVR 1 games, and then the VR 2 plays VR 2 games. Uh, and it's not like a PS5, PS4 kind of split, it's just, uh, it's just a real arbitrary, just... They're, they're not designed to be cross-compatible. Oh, and yeah, it costs a ton as well. VR is expensive like that. I hate having to trigger this eel, and I never know quite what you do here. I should probably not die. That'd be helpful. I like how despite this being Mario's health bar, it also is his oxygen bar, which means when you are underwater, you can just heal by going up to the surface. Like, who cares about taking hits? play those games, you need a PS5 and a second... Uh, uh, why is VR like that? That's the reason why I haven't gotten to VR. I somehow triggered the eel as well. I don't know what exactly I did, but... Sure. That's how you know I haven't played this game a ton before. Anyway, head inside the sunken ship. We have this sort of sub-level, and it's a bit of an interesting one as well. Uh, you have to go down here, and uh, the same rules apply. Uh, although there is a bit of air that you can breathe at the top. Most of the exclusives aren't very good either, or they're just exclusive VR mode. Yeah, yeah, there's that as well. Like, I know uh, Until Dawn had like a VR... Was it a VR mode? Or was it the PlayStation Move feature? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Gran Turismo 7. Yeah. Poor Gran Turismo. I watched the, uh, the Gran Turismo movie on, uh, Saturday, and it was very, very mid. Very mid. I don't know why, like, fans absolutely love it. Uh, I cannot tell you. Like, I, I mean, I, I, 
I know, I know there's bits based on the true story, but I'm like, how much? I don't think a lot of it really is. And they wrote the main character like he's really boring. He has a superpower and no personality. From Alien Apartheid to that. Alien Apartheid. <laughs> What was the name of the new Alien movie? Romulus? The director's most famous movie. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my mate was telling me, it's like, yeah, he's got like a good track record, but... Not sure what happened here, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. You can touch these bu uh, bubbles as well if you want. But uh, if you hit all four chests in the right order, the water level comes down. Now, if you're really good, you can actually get up to the top ledge quick enough before it all kind of comes crumbling down. And then you don't have to do your platforming to just jump up here and hit the box and get the star. District 6? I think so. I don't know any off the top of my head. Yeah. And... There's a lot of things wrong with that movie as well. Like, I can't just blame bad script writing. It's like, oh, the cinematography's a bit weird. Um, my rips on, like, oh, these characters don't feel real. It's like, hey, the cars don't feel real. I've played the games enough to know that, like, Gran Turismo is not, like, 100% realistic. And there's certainly some uh, conveniences that it does to make playing on a controller feel all right. There's obviously a lot of that. But it also cares enough and also the tracks are real and the tracks in the movie are not real the guy first of all as well the guy did formula 3 which i feel i like should be like the fastest and maybe not as fast as like lmp but like certainly faster than whatever he was driving at the nurburgring and dangerous it's like it's an open wheel <laughs> it's pretty that's pretty dangerous um uh there you go i have lured the, the eel out I should now swim to the surface because I need to- I need to breathe. Um... But, uh, I- there was one part I noticed in particular, which is in the climax of the movie at Le Mans. They have to, um, do like a- oh, he goes around- First of all, they make it like, oh, I don't follow the line because only, like, plebs follow the line and I make my own line. And it's like, the line is there if you're, like, got no one ahead of you. Like, that's what the line's for. If the moment you need to overtake someone, the line doesn't mean the line anymore. Also, you can't use the line in online... Uh, nice. Uh, you can't use the line in actual competitive multiplayer. It's just there to, like, teach you, you know, where you should break and where, how hard you turn into the corners and stuff like that. The turn right to go left. Speed. I am speed. I am Steve. That was a different one. Oh, wait, he went back into his shell. Okay. We're gonna have to go quick. <sighs> I always struggle with this eel, I'll tell ya. Got tired of walking. Of wading, sorry. Not walking. Wading. This eel, I tell ya. Yeah, what you gotta do is you gotta tap the, the star oh, on his tail. Not like that. When the eel walking, uh, don't don't get the eel. If the eel wore pants, would he wear them like this? Or, yeah. There you go. If you die, by the way, you lose your health. You just get booted out of the painting. One thing I wish is that this game didn't have lives, and it's something that they carried into. Every Mario game since, except for Odyssey. That's the first one that, like, did away with lives. Because if you lose all your lives, you have to load from the main menu, which sort of punishes you if you weren't saving, but you get the prompt to save every single time you pick up a star. Um, and so, like, all it really punishes you is you have to, one, load a save and then walk back to the painting with absolutely nothing at risk. So why are they, why are they, why are they game over you? Oh my gosh. Here, remember what I said about depth perception? I don't care, I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Oh, it's all the way over there. <laughs> and then he drowned. 
This is my death perception. My life perception determines my death perception. <laughs> Three times the charm. I like how much I'm bruising the rest of this, and I was like, man, I can't deal with the eel. It's like a Koopa here as well, if you want to... Oh, not on the star. Not on the star. How did you think about the same song? Oh, Frantic is, is eternal though. Frantic is like my motto, my jam. Keep searching, keep on searching. This search goes on. <laughs> So good, it's so good. I will say the frame rate is like sometimes atrocious in the underwater. Uh, we're gonna feel it in Dire Dire Docks, I'll tell you that. Alright, there you go. There we go, I did it. I did it. I knocked the star off the eel. We can swim up to the top, have a breath. We did it, boys. So, uh, yeah, okay, so I, I, I'm framing in my head. Do I do three streams? We'll do th three, we'll do three. Because if I'm going quick at the end, I can, oh my gosh, the eel. Uh, if I'm going quick at the end, I can show off some speedrun strats and some other things that I know of. Not a lot of speedrun strats. Red coins on the ship afloat. This is our excuse to do the, uh... 100 coins, is it actually? Oh yeah, it is, yeah. Because I'm like, oh, we haven't activated the cannon. It's like, eh, because it's somewhere else. I don't know where the guy is. Um, only three, only three in there. There's a green box. I don't believe you need it at all on this level. So the, a lot of the coins uh, lie in these clams. Which I am sometimes terrible at getting, but that's okay, because you're underwater. <laughs> Health means nothing. Um, yeah, uh, so anyway, I mentioned uh, Le Mans. Um, they had an ending climax of the movie at Le Mans, and they need, this guy needs to constantly be winning his races by like two frames. Every single race is like that. The real Le Mans race that he entered, which is apparently what they're depicting here, where he came third, he was behind second place by a lap, and ahead of fourth place by two laps. It was not a photo finish. And also, it's like, within your class, it's, it's Le Mans. It's like, don't... <laughs> you don't need to be, like, so, like, ag aggressive at Le Mans. It's, like, when they go, oh, it's a 20 frame. You do not get photo finishes that often at Le Mans. Rarely happens. Uh, so there's a fun pole here, which sometimes I am... Uh, I don't mind. <laughs> I've got some coins everywhere, though. There's a lot of coins in this level, actually. I think this one should be one of the more straightforward ones to get 100 coins in. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, you may need... We'll come back, because we do... Not for the coins, but... We do need to come back for the very last star, because I forgot. Yeah. It's in the jet stream. If only there was a way to go in the jet stream, other than mashing the A button, you know, perfectly. Which I will, I will show off for the, uh, for the... It's not exactly a glitch, it's just doing it well. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, in, in, a, in an attempt to do this photo finish, and he doesn't follow his line, no gamer mode today, Fine, I'll do the game of mode. I'll do it. Not this very moment, I'm going for 100 coins first. Uh... But, uh, but in an attempt to make the drama a bit kind of deeper, they've edited in a hairpin right before the final straight of Le Mans. And there's many times in the movie when they do, like, you know, shots of the cars, and they're not sequential. They're, like, at very different areas of the tracks that they're on. They've definitely spent the money to go to these tracks most of the time, or at least get cars out and do some shots there. But, like, sometimes they're just not at all in, in a great sequence. It's very hard to follow exactly where they are. Um, 
counter counterpoint if you want to see a good one uh the recent ford v ferrari um that's a that's a good example and that really does capture the you know like the physical nature of where they are it, it just irks me because like if you're a fan of Gran Turismo, you are like this guy. You're like, oh, I know the tracks, I've driven them a thousand times. And I'm going to completely disregard the, like, mocking gamers script writing. They're like, gamers are fat, bet you've never, like, been outside this long kind of stuff. Like, actually, it's part of the plot. And it's like, none of these characters are, like, overweight. Like, <laughs> like, why, why are you saying this to them? This is their exclusive Sony content. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's... It's just like, oh, I'm gonna ignore the, the gamer trash. Also, like, his mechanics hate him because he's a, he's a gamer. There was that, um... Uh... He's like a weeb. He's like, he wants to go to Tokyo. It's like, oh, is that because... Because of the guy who made your game? It's, yeah, like, that's, that's all this guy's known for. I mean, this isn't really, like... It's removed enough from the game itself. There's like a point where Orlando Bloom is like, I played the game. I know what it means. Like, that kind of, like, there is a little bit of that. But for the most part, it's like, this, the, the Gran Turismo Academy was a real thing. And he, this guy was a real person on it. And then he really did come third at Le Mans. Uh, and then really did um, have an incident at the Nürburgring, which unfortunately did happen after the whole plot of the movie. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to use it as a dramatic set piece. Um... Who is the movie for? Well, I was thinking it would be, like, just a doco about this guy's life, but it did have to involve Gran Turismo, so calling it a Gran Turismo movie felt like that would be the natural, like, way of going about it, and it sort of is that, but it's too much a video game movie, in the sense that the main character is written like he has absolutely no character flaws, and he's got a superpower of, oh, I can just make time slow down. Like, he's literally Franklin from GTA V. I can make time slow down, and suddenly I'm now an amazing driver. And he never makes any mistakes. It's just other people are so aggressive on the road. They're mean to him. People don't give him a chance. He knows more. It's like, what on earth? Like, I mean, the real guy, it seems like a talented driver, and I'm certainly glad that he went through that process and managed to, you know, be scouted out and found, but, like, Gran Turismo teaches you half of driving. It teaches you, uh, like, principle, it gets you to love the sport. That's always good. It teaches you the principle of trying, trying again, and learning your lines, and understanding different parts of cars, and getting yourself really into it. It does not give you any visceral feedback Oh, I mean, maybe if you've got a driving wheel, maybe maybe you've got a bit more, but like, uh, like all simulators, which in, in, in real life as well, is almost, it, almost, almost, yeah. I don't think it, like, they make it out like he's done anything wrong. I'll get these jumps one day, I'll tell you. Um, but it's like, oh, it, it seems a bit weird. I don't even know if his girlfriend is, like, real in the movie. He has a girlfriend who's, like, purely an object for, like whatever reason. Like, it's just a... <laughs> set of course, I mean, that'd be good. I am watching the Need for Speed movie later this month, so... We'll have that, but at least Need for Speed is like... You know, you can make you can make that case a little more. Although, most modern Need for Speeds are... Oh my god, wow, I'm terrible at this. Most modern Need for Speed games are just like... Uh, millennial rebels. Millennial anarchists, like, kind of cringy stuff, where it's like, we're fighting the system, and it's like, bro, you are, like part of the system. <laughs> you you are you are not your own like thing. If only people stood up, Need for Speed is basically Fast and Furious. And I'm I will accept that. I will definitely accept that outcome. Alright, Blast of the Stone Pillar. It was that star that I attempted that moment ago. Alright, this one's a little tricky. You got these three little uh, stalagmites coming out of the, the water here. You're gonna aim sort of high up at any of them. Um, maybe the one to my right is a bit of a better shot, because I think this one might be a bit like far out. But I'm gonna try my best. Oh, I've gone over it. I've gone over it. Easier way to get to the... 
Oh, yeah, 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 there is a way. If it, I think it's been really done, but someone, like, there's a very particular set of inputs that allows you to walk up this pillar. I'm not that guy. There are some insane p things people have found with Mario 64. And Mario 64, as well, um, uh, Nintendo might not want you to know this, but there does exist a full-on decompilation of Mario 64 that runs with a Vulcan uh, graphics accelerated um, kind of renderer in an SDL window, and it works with X input controllers, and it's like, yeah, like... Man. Let's go, yeah. The Mario 64 source port is, like, a very, very good wonder. The props are the people who figured it all out. Like, Mario 64 is, I mean, I said 8 megabyte cartridge, and a lot of, you know, a, a fair bit of that cartridge is just graphics and stuff like that, so it's not like, you know, you're missing out on, um, you know, the, like, there's a ton of code, but certainly... Uh, you know, reversing any game is a fair bit of effort. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, I think I'm off by a little bit, but okay. No, we're good. We're good. I've got it. <laughs> this one's very tricky, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'll get there. I'll get there. I'll get there. Don't worry. Don't worry. The levels in this game are not that big, and and I think that plays to its benefit of like how sort of esoteric some of its mechanics are. It's like, I don't think they'd really do something so like, just, hey, it's there, you know what I mean? There you go, it's a, it's a bit of a weird jump. And there is a way to get here as well, there's a retro achievement in the bonus is it in the bonus? I think it's in the main set, actually. It's just the all coins that got moved out to the bonus. Uh, but there's an achievement for getting that star without hitting the cannon. And there's also an achievement for getting this star without the metal suit. So we're gonna we're gonna try and do this. Um, but this one's not too bad. I remember there being a Cooper up here. I don't know why. Uh, so this is this is a sequence break gamer moment, but I don't care. <laughs> all right, so. How I mentioned that, oh, if you hit A in the right rhythmic timing, you'll go the fastest. That gives you the ability to swim through this the right way. Because you technically need the metal suit to swim towards that. But if you if you just mash the A button with the right timing, you'll grab it anyways. Did they intend for that to be the case? I'm not too sure. That's the whole World 3 done. Time for World 4. Freezeezy Peak. I mean, uh... <laughs> the big thing. Sometimes I feel it's it's like how, um... If you ever... Portal is a great example because I got the developer commentary, but they actively describe, um, for Chamber 14 or 13. I forgot which one it was. I think it's 14. They actively describe a way that one of the playtesters completely skipped the whole puzzle, and they left it into the game because they were like, it's cool. Most people won't figure it out, but some people will, and if they can... Hey, that's worth it. Um... We got a couple of different places to go to in this, uh, star... Uh, sorry, in this world, but, uh, the easiest one is, uh... You gotta just go down this chimney and go down the slope. There's lots of coins here as well, so... If you're doing 100 coins, this one... or start with the slope, because it's very easy to... You know... Uh, there is a secret there as well. <laughs> but uh, it's very easy to, you know, grab a lot of coins here. You know, you got blue coins. Like, look at all these, like, extra ones. All over the place. Um, also, absolute pain doing the uh, all coins subset. Because uh, you have to grab all, well, these coins as well as all the ones outside. And you basically get one chance at getting, like, more. So... Here we go! The stars in this world are very straightforward though, I'll tell you that. It's got a bit involved this level. There's, there's a general, um, trend of tower levels, where it's like you sort of snake around the top of a tower. This one is, uh, the reverse. You start at the top and you sort of, you can keep entering. You can't, you can't keep entering the slide. I just die a lot. And I don't think the blue coins respawn. So, 
This one, we take the outside slope. We grab the penguin, and we go down all the way. That's not too bad. You just little <laughs> U-turn here. And then you gotta deal with the most terrifying part of the level. You gotta go past the snowman head, and then you gotta try your best to... I think there's a... There's a gondola here, and the gondola is not working in the star. So you just gotta deal with this bridge. Oh, most of these penguins have short lives, I'll tell you that. You gotta deal with this. This is always terrifying. This part absolutely gives me, like, anxiety, I'll tell you. Uh, there's other ways you can do it as well. Like, obviously, you could just jump off the mountain the right way. <laughs> You'd land it. So anyway, I'm going to actively uh, keep this baby away just to, you know, get some more alimony. But if you uh, talk to the, the penguin, she's like, You got my baby! Have you seen my baby? She's the most precious baby in the whole wide world. They said she has my beak. I just can't remember where I left her. Let's see, I stopped for herring and ice cubes and then, oh, I don't, just don't know. So, you saw that there was another penguin just up here. Uh, this is... <laughs> This is one of my favorite parts of, of the game, this, this, like, extra penguin up here. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, there he is, sorry. He's, he's, he's much closer than I thought. He's just on the roof here. You should can give this penguin over. And once he's in the, the pen, the pen pit, he'll, the mother will be like, There you go. Say hi. Say hi. Maybe I gotta hold the penguin. That's not my baby, she looks nothing like me. Her parents must be worried sick. I think I'm stuck with this, like, penguin there. Alright. Uh, oh, I have lost the baby. The baby is gone. The baby is missing. There is a warp if you stand here, by the way. This will lead you back to the top of the mountain, which is very convenient because that baby likes to respawn at the top of the mountain. And, uh, yeah, if you want to, like, cheat a little bit. What tells you about these warps, by the way? I'm not too sure. You sort of have to just guess. Some of them are a little really arbitrary. Um, a third penguin? Oh no. Yeah, unfortunately you can't use the warp here, but uh, I mean you can see that the like edge there. So all you gotta do is just be on the reverse side of the mountain. Which is as easy as being here. And also, all this is like just snow, so you don't even take full damage. I love the snow particles, by the way. It really adds to the feeling. You found my precious, precious baby. Where have you been? How can I ever thank you, Mara? Oh, I do have this star. Here, take it with my eternal gratitude. There you go. You get a star. And then she gets... This isn't even yours. This was the other one. This is always a classic thing to do. Hold on. We'll get there. Hey! <laughs> it's not even your baby. Here we go. Listen, man, you can't. You can't. <laughs> uh, I'm not even. Oh, was that? I wasn't keeping track. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one, the big penguin race. This one is a bit of uh, reusing the same star because you go back in here. And now suddenly, there's a big penguin. He grew up after falling off the ledge. Hey, hey, Mario buddy, how's it going? Step right up, you look like a fast sledding kind of guy. I know speed when I see it, yes sirree. I'm the world champion sledder, you know. What do you say, how about a race? Ready, and yeah, it's it's the same slide. It's just now that there's a penguin in the way and you have to get there in a time limit. Uh, the little shortcut, uh, which you may have seen, that just involves literally steering straight into a wall. Oh my goodness. Uh, he tells you off for taking that shortcut, I believe. He's like, hey, no shortcuts. You can do a, uh, yes, the 120 star rematch as well. Uh, once you get all 120 stars, they stretched his model out very wide and said, oh, I'm fat. It's been a while, Mario. 
Although, since you can do virtually any star in any order, because really the only thing the game wants you to do is get so many stars. You broke my record! Unbelievable! I knew that you were the coolest. Now you've proven that you're also the fastest. I can't award you a gold medal, but here, take the star instead. You've earned it. You can do the stars in any order in this game. Like, really, nothing, you know, is forcing you to do World 4 next and World 5 next and so on. Um, which is one thing that I absolutely love about this game is that everyone will have, until you do all 120 stars, everyone does have a very different experience with it. And you'll just, you know, you'll play, you'll play different levels and you'll get different stars and you'll be like, ah. So, that's always fun. Eventually though, you know, you'll get all 120 stars and that's all cool. Just like this mountain. Uh, I'm gonna try and do a wonderful jump to get these. Here we go. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna ignore you, Mr. Penguin Man, because I need to grab that blue coin before it slides all the way down. There you go. I'm gonna try my best to grab as many of these coins as I can. But there's so many coins in this level. So, no, no sweat other than falling off here, because if you fall off here, that's a death. There you go. Also, if you fall off outside, that's a death, and there are some slippery slopes, so they get you there, but... Yeah. I don't got 81 coins. There was only one blue coin. Oh, okay. I remember that... I'm thinking, um, Tall Tall Mountain. That slide is a lot harsher to, to get all the stuff in as well, because that has to be at the end. Because you can't go back from that, can you? Oh, actually, no, there is a warp. There is a, a little warp in that, in that room, I think. Alright. Uh, were there any coins out here? Oh, there was this red coin. Yes. Whoa. Um, and I believe there's... Uh, it could be a one-up. Oh, no, there's that one, yeah. And there's the platform with the blue coins as well, but I'm hoping that there's just enough coins along the, um... Along the, uh, the slope itself. So I don't have to get too many, too many coins. Uh, the 100 coins was an element that they, uh, also, uh, uh, included in Mario Sunshine for the GameCube, which was the, uh, effectively the successive, the, the successor to this one. Um, it's kind of interesting as well that they never did release a second Mario 64 or anything like it from Nintendo themselves. They sort of just let Mario have Mario 64 and then Mario Sunshine came out a year after the GameCube released and so on. Uh, I think I mentioned something about uh, this. I think I had to deal with PC booty games on the DOS box. Very nice. That was a fairly straightforward 100 coins, wasn't it? There's this fun ledge as well. If you're ever up here, it's like there's a lot of freebie, like, coins. Two of them. Two freebie blue coins. Apparently you can uh, just load them like a normal game. very nice, very nice. Uh, the red coins, there's a bit of a, a bit of a trek to get them, I'll tell you that. I think I always forget this one because this, like, you can sort of see it, but it's like, it is a step and the coin is just hanging off that step. That was a tricky one. Choose the graphical palette. Very nice. Alright, this is like the most terrifying long jump of them all. Oops. Oh, we don't need that long jump, do we? We don't, we don't, we don't need our legs, do we? Uh, big oof. We got there in the end. Uh, Mario 64 has, like, very iconic oof sounds. Uh, what is the way I usually like doing this? I like going around the outside and doing it like this. I've, I've saved the, the, like, roughest of the red coins for last. So, yeah, you can see there's, like, this little kind of ledge here. You just need to sort of jump off the ledge and then sort of 
wiggle the camera and then hope that you don't slide off into the abyss. And then this is like all the way back over there, so not that bad. Uh, but there is a one-up in this uh, block. Very nice. Yeah, I I'm, I can't explain the randomized pillar. There's a lot of um, uh, what, what I'll refer to geometry in this game as well, where it's just like it's just there. It's a block. We'll get this jump this time. Hey, first try. Here we go. First try. Someone's gonna say it's sacrilege to get a life every 50 coins as opposed to 100 as well. Snowman's lost his head. I hate the saw. I'm terrible at this one. I'll tell you. Alright, so what you gotta do is... Oh, first of all, don't go up. Don't go on the actual slide. Oh, we are... Oh, come on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'll get there. Uh, go up here. I need a good head on my shoulders. Do you know of anybody in need of a good body? Please, I'll follow you if you do. And then he just starts going. And then tries to murder you as well. Uh, so, you see there's the big uh, head down there. Literally, just skip the slope. And, uh, you need to stand, like, here? I don't know, I, I've forgotten. I've forgotten exactly where you need to stand. Or he tells you off, because, uh, you weren't following him. Okay, well, he's, he's gone. He's, he's gone. Oh no, talk about an out-of-body experiences. My body has melted away. Have you run into any headhunters lately? I could sure use a new body. Brr, my face might freeze like this. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Ah, uh, you need to cross the checkpoint? That makes a bit of sense as well. Uh, I'm gonna try and do a pro jump here as well, because I need to activate the cannon. Well, you don't actually really need to activate the cannon, but... Uh, well, I've very missed it, so that's okay. I, th I'm, I thought you could drop down, but yeah, you might be right about the invisible trigger. We'll do it a bit more legit. You have to be ahead of the ball. That, that is true. Don't let him hit you right off the bat, then. This one's probably the harshest star, just because, like... You just gotta know. You just gotta know. I mean, it sort of describes, like, leading him. I feel like I've gone too far ahead, but I don't know. Yeah, okay. Alright. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, what did I hit there? <laughs> I'm trying to get that bob on there, but you don't, you don't have to. You don't have to. There's a, there's a way you can get around that. Very fidgety. Yeah, I, I'll just say I always struggle with this one. I'm, <laughs> I keep rambling about my random topics. Um, for example, uh, there was this one uh, article which came out today. How to succeed in Mr. Beast production. Leet slides. Uh, we are not ahead of him. We're not ahead of the snowball. Oh, we are definitely not ahead of the snowball. The snowball may be a lost cause, if you will. Oh, it's definitely a lost cause at that point. Goodbye. Imagine this guy watching that every single time. Um, but yeah, this is a leaked PDF of uh, particularly how to be a Mr. Beast uh not just a video editor, but you do need to know how to shoot video, but more like a crew member. And a crew member at uh, his business is basically like, you do everything. You organize like all the fancy stuff. You make sure that like you've got people on, you know, on the set that you need to do. Uh, and you need to be an A, an A grade player. No B grade players. You will be fired if you're not an A grade player. Um, it sounds a bit cutthroat, but also it doesn't sound unique to, like, Mr. Beastland. Um, I mean, there's lots of, there's lots of businesses, and especially a lot of top businesses do act like this. That is not to say it is exactly, like, right. I, I don't know, I guess it's kind of like, well, that is kind of the perfectionism that some things have to do. Um, but there's, like, 
one part of the of the, uh, the, the the PDF, which is like, you're here to make good. Oh my gosh! Wow, you're here to make good YouTube videos, not good videos. Like, don't be so like perfectionist about it. I love that drop, by the way. You don't need to be a good player to be a game dress. That is true. Mr. Beast makes a lot more money though, and generally has some credibility. Even if there are recent, um, like, I, I don't even get the controversies, but, uh, like, uh, I mean, it's like, it is one of his mates that was in the recent controversy, uh, but I'm like, I'm digging into, like, some guy's personal life, and that's just like, I don't know, it's, it's not... Whatever shows up in the videos is, like, slightly different. That being said, though, there were other things that were in his personal life, and I was like, okay, well, that affects other people. I don't know. I feel like mentioning it and having any opinion on it is, like, danger territory. So I... I... I'm not very opinion... Oh my gosh, I'm struggling with that. Yeah, there's... A, yeah, there's always a bit of that. Like, um, my, uh... I had a mate tell me about Sky Does Minecraft. And I'm like, I just remembered the name. I remembered he was a Minecraft person. It's like, oh, and he had like all this stuff and like terrible like falling out with his like uh, either wife or girlfriend. I forgot which. And I'm like, man, you know, like there are so many content creators that do have that kind of like stuff going on. You should be on the other side of the snowman head. Yeah, yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. This is what I mean, is that, like, not only are those invisible triggers, but explicitly being... Oh, 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 okay. Alright, that one's on me. Yeah, it, yeah, the completion... The completionist... Like... I feel like that's one where it's like, that is a professional foul. That one is le legitimately, like, him as the business and the, you know, the personality of the completionist. That was all that. Yeah, I forgot to give the- yeah, like, that's- that- that one is entirely on him. He made right eventually, but, like, one, inflation, and two, uh, like, you know, you, you can't- you can't spend that long not donating your stuff to charity. Alright, I'm here, I'm on the other side of the head. <laughs> okay, okay, um, there was the falling out as well, where there's, like, Collaborator? I forgot the, his name, I'm sorry, I don't watch. The other side- oh, the- Close to the wall, down by the river... I'm gonna- I'm gonna make like a DSP moment and say like, oh... Nothing in the game tells me about this. But, I, I, I I'll get there eventually. I- I will say from memory, I do not remember it being anywhere near as aggressive on the DS version. And this is the only star that's like this, where I'm like... I just struggle to get it, I tell ya. Oh, oh. I... okay. 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 The DS version has the, the Silver Star, like, one, and then it's got the... the, the sorry, not the Silver Star, it's got the Switch uh, Star every time. I think it does have this, though. You can double check. Double check on the wiki. But I'm, I'm fairly certain it's there. That's the fun thing as well, the DS version, for, for anyone who doesn't know, the DS version adds a fair bit of extra content, and it also changes various bits of content. Uh, for example, uh, it adds multiple characters, each with their own abilities. Um, and it makes some of the stars rely on those exclusive abilities. Um, and as well, every level has a seventh star. Uh, let's... There you go. There you go. First try. First try. Perfect. What a great new body. Here, this is a present for you. It's sure to warm you up. Oh, wow, a star. First try, first try. Here we go! Uh... But the... Uh, I will say that, like, reading up on, like, this Mr. Beast, uh... Production document, um... 
I don't think it's too, uh, it's for reference as well. You're meant to use the cannon to, like, shoot yourself to a platform, but I always like doing this. And then you do a kick right here. And you should land on this ledge, which puts you at this, like, great point here. Already sort of further down this route, because it's very perilous. You'd have to go down this, like, bit here. You got these flower dudes, and every time you bounce on the flower dudes, you, like, jump past them. You see this one, like, tree here? You're meant to use the cannon to shoot over towards this one tree. It's really precise. It's really precise. I prefer the jump. The jump is easier. Uh, it was on the DS2. Wall kicks may work. Ah. But otherwise, then you're over here. Also, they an explicit part where they tell you about the long jump. And this one tells you about the wall kick. Which... I guess also, yeah, that was a movement strat that this game popularized the heck out of. There weren't a lot of games that did wall kicking. Ninja Gaiden, I guess. In 3D it feels a bit interesting, but uh, it works out okay. Anyway, just uh, walk across the ice, you know, ice, casually. There's rarely ice physics in this game, but that's one of it. And that's it, that's, um, Frizzy Peak. Uh, you've recovered 30 power stars. Uh, this technically unlocks the second of the three Bowser boss fights. Um, now, there is a Bowser fight up there, which uh, I will do. Th there is a secret star I'll get first. Um, so the way this castle is, is uh, designed, uh, <laughs> this room uh, was extended a fair bit in the uh, DS version as well. Because you come in here and it's just like, oh, okay. It's like a little, little... I don't know, you meant to see out these windows? Yeah. You definitely see out that one. So, uh, <laughs> this introduces uh, the Princess Secret Slide, which is uh, one of everyone's favorite parts of the game, mostly because you can do it right off the bat. The Secret Slide. There's a star hidden here that Bowser couldn't find. When you slide, press forward uh, to speed up, so on. Yeah. There's lots of slides in the game as well, like quite a good number of them. In fact, it, if you think about it as well, like, I mean, Spyro Year of the Dragon had, like, slide levels. Like, that kind of stuff was so, like, influential. Um, there's a bunch of coins, but since it's not a full world, it doesn't matter too much. Um, I think if you beat 21 seconds, an extra star will fly out. Uh, but that box also contains a star. So, you need to do this, like, area twice. Make sure at least once you get the fast star here. There's a poster in that room written by Peach telling you about the secret star. Oh, well, let's double check that right now. But yeah, no, the secret slide is two freebie stars for you. Like, it's really not that much effort, so... Uh, ah, here you go, there's the poster. Mario, my castle is great peril. I know that Bowser is the cause, and I know that only you can stop him. The doors in the castle that have been sealed by Bowser can be opened only with star power. But there are secret paths in the castle, paths that Bowser hasn't found. One of these paths is in this room, and it holds one of the castle's secret stars. Find that secret star, Mario. It will help you on your quest. Please, Mario, you have to help us. Retrieve all of the power stars in the castle and free us from this awful prison. Please. <laughs> What is Bowser's goal in this game? Because many other Mario games, he has like an actual goal, mostly to just take over the Mushroom Kingdom. Do you literally just walk into like Peach's castle and go, I'm holding everyone ransom? Which granted is probably every Mario game up to this point as well. That, that's sort of what he does. And then in Mario Wonder, he is the castle. That was a good jump. <laughs> that was a good jump at the end. Here we go! Here we go. I am the table. Anyway, let's do the first Bowser boss level. It's through this door. I think it's very convenient to do it now. Um, you need eight power stars to get into it. it. It's really not that much. There's a picture of Peach. Let's go into that picture. Oh. Nice, I love it. So every single Bowser level consists of a, uh, a red coin star, which doesn't boot you out of the level when you pick it up. You need to grab 
this coin, and then be very careful because there's another coin back there, and uh, this platform likes disappearing very quickly. And also, it's very easy to slide off there. Uh, the Bowser levels are very abstract, and if there's one thing, not a lot of Mario games capture this style of Bowser level. They're very much castles in many other games. Um, this song as well is, like, iconic as heck. Um, most of the Bowser levels are also very, uh, 2D, I guess? Like, I mean, I know clearly I'm walking out into the, the background here, you know what I mean? Secret levels, oh, true, secret levels in Sunshine, yeah, true, true. And I, I mean, Galaxy is also no, uh, no stranger to abstract levels. Um, but there's something very, ooh, ooh. There's something very just direct about, like, literally a platformer, Bubsy 3D, one day, one day, maybe. Um... Again, lots of coins, but you don't need 100 coins. They're just there for the style of the points. I worry that Goomba can run off the, the ledge. There's lots of one-ups as well in these levels as well, so if you ever need one-ups, just feel free to keep asking here. But I'm pretty sure... Do you keep your lives when you turn off the system? I don't think you do. So they have asked, uh... You to choose your DOS roller. Oh, have they asked me? Oh, uh, no, not yet. I, to be fair, I haven't been checking very much, and I really should. Um, I, I, I've been very, uh, slack. Oh, I hate that jump. I hate it. Um, no, you don't. Okay. Which is also another point on why are the game overs and lives in the first place. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, okay, sure. Um,. But, uh, but, you yeah, know, I haven't been, uh, exactly keeping up very well. I keep checking in, like, every few days, but I'm not saying a lot in, in that, uh, the RetroTube Instead chat. I forgot to mention as well, um, not last week, actually, it would have been two weeks ago. Uh, please, please play my set of, uh, Leadstorm Rally 2011. <laughs> that was an interesting one to work on, though. I liked it. It was good fun. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I've been a little slack and I've been very slack in actually doing the sets that I've got. I haven't, like, had one expire, but certainly when they're like, oh, you know, you've got three months from when you claim your set to when it's done, um, or when you need to finish it, uh, like, I'm not, like, just binging right through the sets I've got. I'm just sort of, like, taking my time and I've only got, like, the one or maybe the two right now because I've got the, the Choro Q holiday puzzle. Uh, claim right now. Uh, I feel a lot of people have lost interest. Um, it's, okay, like, I, I mean, I get it, and I completely get also, people really burn themselves out, because you see people, like, especially admins on the site, and not to say that, like, it's because of that, but it's that, like, it's very easy to underestimate how much work is actually involved with, like, making sets and keeping up with the community and stuff like that. I do always struggle with really, like, staying with a community. I get very interested in something, and then I do always wane my interest. That happens with a lot of hobbies I've, I've got myself into. Um, I do really appreciate the Retro Achievements people for helping out with understanding that, and I do not have any, uh, like, expression to, like, drop it at the moment. I definitely want to make sure that if I ever do drop it, I don't leave things in a state where people can't maintain it. Like, I do want my, uh, want my sets to be eternal. I'm very glad right now that, uh, Leadstorm Rally 2011 has had no tickets. That means I've done something good, I guess. Like, it hasn't, hasn't been bad. I've usually had, like, oh, I need to clean up some stuff. But I've been in a good state where it's like, I haven't had a ticket for a long time. There we go. The star appears right at the end of this level, so... Nice and easy. I hate this ledge. It's just like, gives me anxiety, man. Uh, the flame that burns the strongest. Um, but yeah, like, I I do... The programmer in me, and also outside of me, because <laughs> I do it as a career. Um, but like, really, really does, you know, measure twice, cut once. You, you want to make sure that your stuff that you put out is good quality. And that's why, like, 
Uh, also, Bowser fight. I've, I've just been skipping the dialogue a little bit, but all the Bowser fights operate the same. He does some stuff, he swats at you, he breathes fire. Uh, King Bobom, in the very, 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 very first star, gave away exactly how to beat him, which is grab his tail by hitting B, and then you get to spin the stick around, which also rip people who don't use analog sticks. You then need to time it so that he goes towards one of these explosives. And then he's dead. The first one is very straightforward. Uh, well, you have the perspective of someone behind the scenes, but the lost interest has happened to the other side of normal. Well, yeah, normal users have that as well. Uh, he still holds the power of the stars, and in fact, Bowser is so smart, he didn't even have a star. He had a key? The key is such a great effect. And this little jingle. Mwah. What does the key do? Well, that one big door right next to here uh, is one of the three, no, two doors, because there's only three Bowser boss, uh, boss fights, and you got to beat the game on the last one, uh, but there's two doors that require keys in order to open, and this uh, prevents you from going to it. This one needs the second key. <laughs> so, the first key is used down here, which uh, is uh, promptly used by that door. But we're gonna go this way, because we've got a boo level to do. Everyone likes a good old boo level. Uh, this uh, le led to a hilarious fan theory, uh, this one, that there used to be uh, a Mips rabbit in the DS version up here, by the way. Lots of the extra stuff as well, there's lots of ghosts all around as well. Uh, but people used to like, read this sign and it's be like, oh it says L is real! Like hold on, hold on, let me, let me try and get rid of this booze and I'll show that off. Spooky season, spooky season is uh, next month. But uh, yeah, people are like, oh my gosh, it says L is real. Can you can you see that? Can can you can you see it says L is real? Oh, pff, exactly. The fan theories are insane. Anyway, head towards this one, Boo, and ground pound him, and you got this little thing here. And then Mario proceeds to get sucked into it, and we are going on a ghost hunt. Come on in here. It's the painting in Strong Mad's cupboard. This is a uh, Big Boo's Haunt, which is a... Uh, you don't stand a ghost of a chance in this house. If you walk out of here, you deserve a ghoul medal. <laughs> so good, so good. The Vanish Cap is inside the blue block. Uh, yes, there's that as well. What's that? The Vanish Cap isn't actually on this level in particular though, but sure. Uh, this first star is going on a ghost hunt. This is the best part of the game, by the way. I don't care. This piano. Go near it. <laughs> That's incredible. It's so incredible. And it's never really been referenced outside of this game as well, has it? Uh, there are some ghosts inside- oh, I hate this. There are some ghosts inside this wall, which technically leads to another room. Uh, ghosts don't die. Yeah, I, I mean, like, you know, you do you in terms of, like, your hobby for, um, you know, if you, if, if you got into retro achievements, then, you know, sure. Like, I, I still enjoy it as, like, a bit of a book club, and I still really do enjoy being it as a player. Um, I've, I've taken great excitement in, like, oh, you know, what's the new set? What's something that I've never played before? Um, that's the whole joy of the system. Um... But you don't have to get involved, like, in the community. You can just be, like, a consumer of it. Um, disclaimer, I patron two bucks a month, by the way, to the site, so... I'm not, like, impartial, and the site itself may not be impartial to me. Like, I, I should always just disclose that, I guess. Um, I'm mostly doing it for, like, server up, up costs, because I know that, like, that thing is not going to be, like, the cheapest... Uh, ...thing to run. I... Mm. That was the last ghost as well. If you do fall down there, it does drop into this basement section, but, uh... I don't need to do this basement section right now. Uh... I mean... Community does community things. Uh, different, different communities. Like, you know, I, I've been, I've been shunted by communities before, and... I just move on at that point, like... That's my perspective on that. My real community of mates is mostly, like, just my friends and my, my, uh, my fun circles and just, like, 
people that that I know, like individuals, not like any like collective group or big like revolving door full of. Because a lot of these public ones, I always travel with public ones, but it's like, boo! Mm. Here comes the master of mischief, the Tower of Terror, the big boo! <laughs> There he is, the big boo. He's so big, he takes three ground pounds, and he sounds like a swamp. It, seriously, he was going, Arr. I mean, I have a server with most of my friends in it. That is true. Once you kill uh, the big boo, the stairs work. There were stairs the whole time. Here we go. I hear of people getting punished for stupid things. And not getting punished. Yeah, I always... I, I will say the only other community that I, like, actually, like, publicly post on is uh, the Bepinex community. <laughs> Back when I did the Clone Era modding and, like, actually getting to Bepinex, it's like, those guys are chill as, and they have great memes. So... Uh, this one is Ride the Big Bruise Merry-Go-Round, which is confusingly downstairs. And the quickest way to get downstairs like, uh, it's just because we got the stairs here, and then you have to proceed to just go down. Jump down. Seems the larger communities... I, all large communities are like that. Um, I remember... and uh, I was gonna say, I remember being in um, the, the G-Man Lives Discord, and he shut that down, like, kind of quickly after a while, but, like, uh, it, it, it is hard to moderate, and as you get more people, it's like... There's always going to be people going like, oh, you know, you're not applying the rules consistently. It's because, like, most people are not good moderators. And, um, a lot of people try their best, and that's fine. And, you know, you set some rules, you've got to hopefully stick with your rules. Um, but, like, I myself, I am, like, I would never be a moderator because I absolutely hate being the bearer of bad news. And I hate judging people. And I think most people are like that as well. But they also like moderating and sometimes, or maybe... Slightly more often than you'd expect. Uh, there's a little bit of a power trip going on. Um, that's how it was with Wes 2. I mean, I'm not really one to like... I don't know about this particular... The particular beef that you've got. Um, so I can't opine on really anything individual people have, have done or said. Um, the people who would be the best moderators are the ones who want to be moderators the least. I... I, I I think it's a bell curve. I think it, I'm, like, too far down to, like, even be good. <laughs> uh, secret of the Haunted Books. But, I mean... Do, do I dare say it's, like, politicians? You know what I mean? It's, like, people who want to rule the world are also, like, people who definitely have a bit of an agenda and that kind of stuff. The Secret Books, by the way, is uh, this bookshelf room. By the way, you like how the um, there's a bit of an LOD swap on Mario here? He looks kind of... It's a little hard to see, but, yeah. Uh, so the secret books. Hit the books in the right order. Not that one. Not the lower book. It's the top book. Then the right book. Then the middle book on the left. And then it reveals this bookshelf. And what's behind the bookshelf? Literally the stuff. And it's essentially just politics at the end of the day. And I kind of wanted to go online. Not see politics. Uh, or wanted to go online. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's fair. That's why on, on other servers I'm on, like, I do... I do discuss actual politics with some mates, but not every server I talk about politics. So I'm like, real politics people don't like. And then there's inter-drama politics. There's like the the whole like, oh, you know, like, what are you doing? Uh, I'm actually going to exit course and we're going to jump back to the second star. Because did you notice how all those boos uh, drop blue coins? That would be very, very, very convenient. Um... Unless the fourth star is also the same as the second one. I'm not too sure if it is, but I think it'd be convenient to get these coins down below first. Because uh, this one is a little bit of an interesting one when you're trying to get all... Well, at least, well, if you are trying to get all the coins, good luck. Uh, but there's a few things around, like you've got the scuttlebutt. Everyone's favorite enemy. That's only in this game. Walking around the castle, um... What's this background, by the way? It's a vibe. It's an absolute vibe. 
hope it appears in Party Jamboree. I hope it does too. Yeah, look at all these extra coins around the outside. It's like, oh. There you go. Here's this back door that you might have expected, by the way. There's a couple of booze inside here, and all the booze drop blue coins, so. Oh, they're in these. Oh, yeah, true, they are. They are, yes. Uh, keep these boxes here, by the way. Don't break these boxes yet, and try and do a. Oh, try and do a triple jump. Actually, you don't even need a triple jump. You can do a wall kick off that. You can jump onto this roof, and there is a one up up there. I'm just going for the one up, because why not? There we go. I don't think there's any coins up there, though. Again, so many coins. I think when you know what you're doing, you're definitely not going to be, like, shy of any coins in this game. This box is going to appear in a couple of other levels, but it's a bit curious, and it drops, I think, is that four or five coins? I wasn't counting, but it's a good number of coins. Lemon has told me that, apparently, the politics? Oh, the... the... party jamboree. Uh, also, these eyes, which are, what are they called? Astrobot is selling well. Selling well in the West, but bad in Japan. Interesting. Interesting. I worry that, uh, okay, if there's one thing I, as well I saw, it is, I saw someone claim that it was an $80 game. I haven't checked, I'm oh, legit, let's just look it up right now. <laughs> I can verify this myself. It is shopping, Google. Oh. All right, JB Hi-Fi has it for $99. Uh, the PlayStation saw 110. Amazon 90 bucks, and there's a deluxe edition 125 Australian. 125. Okay. For reference, Black Myth Wukong launched at 90 bucks. And 90 bucks has been our Australian starting price for a long time. It's been the like the 60 US equivalent. Um, various Nintendo games launched at 80. Uh, Australian and uh, Wii games were a hundred because the US dollar was very trash compared to, or well, rather, we were trash compared to the US dollar for a while. Uh, Black Myth Wukong is a normal price, but uh, 110 bucks is above normal price, and it's uh, it's abnormal in the sense of uh, he's going to drop the star, so I don't know. Get him. Um, but like PS5 games are dreadfully expensive for what they are, and I think part of not 125 is the deluxe, 110 is the regular price on the PlayStation Store, and it's $90 on Amazon. Which, uh, by the way, notice how the uh, PS5 Pro doesn't have a disc drive in the price. You have to buy that extra. If your games are cheaper retail, which often is the case for some reason. I'm just saying, it's digital. All you gotta do is pay for like the, the like fractions of a cent of bandwidth costs that potentially the average customer performs because they may re-download the game again and again. But like, the, like, that should be incorporated in the cost. Otherwise, that's certainly cheaper than like manufacturing a disc and printing it and distributing copies and paying the stores that you sell things at. Uh, there's a, there's a red coin behind this piano, so that's why you go for it. Uh, all the red coins are inside the, the place here. I, do these, these chairs just die? They don't. Oh, this, this book as well. Oh, yes, the book drops a blue coin as well. Although there's so many coins, it doesn't matter at this point. Um, but yeah, yeah, uh, Sony controls the, yeah, yeah, Sony controls the PlayStation Network, so it's like, well, you're not paying a retailer any extra. And you don't have to pay for discs and all this like distribution costs. You would think that if you wanted to encourage people to do digital, just make it cheaper than the retail. But instead, here am I saying Amazon, which granted Amazon is a very, very big store, but even JB Hi-Fi, which is also a big store in Australia, but it's a physical, like, retailer. JB Hi-Fi continually still offers it for less than the digital price. It's a Sony tech. Yeah, it's, you're just getting taxed extra to just pay online. Um, and I'm not saying Sony is like the, you know, the only store that does that. Uh, certainly, uh, Nintendo charges the same for their online compared to retail. And, um, Microsoft's the same boat. Microsoft stores had some weird, like, 
pricing from here and there. They're guilty of raising the prices too. At least Nintendo, uh, yet, from what I know, hasn't done the $100 creep in Australia yet. New Switch games, at most, are $90 if they're like Breath of the Wild. And $90, again, it's been the normal price for a video game for quite a while. Um, has anyone cared about the... Uh, no. No. Not at all. The, the, the series is like... I don't want to say like Dead System, but it's like... Microsoft hasn't given it that much of an identity. I, I wonder if it's like... It's there for presence. It's not necessarily a loss leader, because it's not like they're leading. <laughs> um... And it's also not that they're losing money, necessarily, but... Oh, maybe. Maybe they are. But... Yeah, no, I, I don't think anyone's actually cared about Xbox the console for a very long time, because it is effectively just a front for Microsoft to release games and software and be in the mindshare. But they definitely do need profits, because that's kind of the whole reason why they're doing this. Like, they're not just like, ah, oh, we'll get people thinking about Microsoft and we make good art. It's like, no, that's... Yeah, it exists. Um, yeah, yeah. The only... The, the only difference with Sega is Sega dropped out of the console market and people forgot they were a big player. And that is what Microsoft is trying to not have happen. And so by running the console, as long as it does make profit, then you're doing okay. The camera, by the way, doesn't really make it quite clear. But there's uh, this. Here we go! You may have noticed that you needed the, um, the, the blue box power-up. Um, I might go and do that right now. Let's go and do that right now, shall we? This involves a, a castle secret star, or multiple castle secret stars, I might as well get out of the way. Uh, it's just down here. Near the end of the, the, the stream, though, I'll, I'll, I'll cut it once we're done with Big Boo's Haunt. Uh, which, given that we've done the 100 coins, is going to be very close. But if you head down in here... Um, not actually this room. Actually, yes, this room. Yes. The death of portable consoles also... Y yes, but I also think the Steam Deck has given it some fresh light. Life. Um, so if you head into this room, there's this, like... Kind of passageway down here. Swim your way through it. And you'll see the, uh, well, this sign on the wall here. Uh, it is decreed that one shall pound the pillars. Very nice. So if you pound the pillars, they go down. And then all the water goes down in this one room. You can also open this door and then head outside and... Oh! We're at the castle and we drain the moat. Which sounds a bit counterproductive, but draining the moat reveals this little secret area. Uh, Steam Deck is not a portable console, it's a portable PC. They don't make games specifically for the deck. That is true, but granted, they don't make games explicitly for the PS for the Xbox as well. <laughs> uh, so we start off, you know, similar to the, the wing cap level, we start off with the power-up. This is the vanish cap, which lets you vanish, and it lets you walk through various transparent texture walls. There's also a ton of one-ups here. If you need a hundred lives, this is the part, because you have a bunch of, of uh, lives right there. Um, I think the, the Steam Deck should be definitely treated as a piece of hardware that people play games on, but definitely, yeah, it's like, well, it's not a console, but I don't know, we may see a bit of an evolution of the games market where we start getting these more generic game-playing devices, and especially in a day and age where, like, emulation is more and more a thing. Like, when the Steam Deck unironically has Yuzu in, like, one piece of marketing material, and it's like, oh no, oh no. Sony, uh, they don't make games specifically for the deck. Uh, Sony gave up on that for a reason. Um, I don't like Sony's reason. I hate this little part here, but... I got there in the end. I got there in the end. I didn't goof it. I didn't goof it. All good. And uh, just like the oh, Ooh, you thought I? I gotta stop. I can't. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I'm not even gonna say anything on that one. 
Uh, having consoles be specialized is what made them special. I mean, yeah, by, by literal definition, yeah. Um, the Vita... The Vita's a tricky one. I love how you can get yourself trapped in here, and that's why they've got the hole in the ground there. Here we go! Uh, there are three of these um, Switch Palaces levels, by the way. Uh, so that was the second one. The third one is um, inside uh, one of the... I think it's actually World 6, isn't it? Hazy Maze Cave, so... Um, let's just walk around the castle and work back up to the top so we can go back to the Big Blue Haunt. Um, you know what's generalized platform for games? Computers. I d like, I do think that consoles, and consoles really should be pushing for, like, specs and kind of hardware gimmicks. Because people will buy things for a console, because a console is a standard, if that makes sense. It is a way for people to make software that works for a specific use case. The problem is that every computer, every hardware right now, every game console right now, is a computer. The Switch is the furthest from it, but it is also an ARM-based device, which is basically an Android tablet. In fact, actually, I th I'm pretty sure... Doesn't it have Android kernel under the hood? Like, it is more Android, you know, <laughs> than, you know, like, okay, sure. So, the other ones, like, they are literally, not, not literally PCs in terms of, like, the operating system, but they're certainly PCs in terms of the hardware. When we keep going, oh, they got, like, you know, tight integration to the, the, um, you know, to the... There's, there's that angry book again. There's this, like, weird little ledge here, um, which is made very explicit in the DS version, because they have, a uh, the, the pea balloon kind of power flower pick up. Um, this is a bit of a tricky one. Um, but yeah, like, all the parts in a PS5 and in an Xbox are recreatable in a personal computer. Um, whereas, like, you go back to the PS3, the cell architecture is very novel. That's like, you don't make computers that are like power PC like that. There were power PC computers. Uh, this is everyone's favorite star, by the way, because yet another big boo. And also, you gotta do some ground pounds, and it's a bit precarious on the balcony. And then, uh, they just like, flip the bird on you, like, oh, you get it, it's up on the roof. And, uh, I always go wrong on this one. I always just like, goof this up real bad. Like that. Yeah. The only true commercial portable console release this gen was the play date. But to be fair though, I like I like what the Switch does because mobile gaming isn't the DS anymore. It used to be like mobile chips were real, real cut down, low power kinds of chips. You'd have to do some very interesting stuff to make it work. And now it's like we have like, processes that can run things that, like, uh, oh my gosh. Like, um, I mean, the, the, the Ryzen Z1 is a, a great example, but it's like, yeah, this is a 7 to 15 watt part, and the NVIDIA Tegra, also great, great examples, um, which, by the way, I'm excited for, uh, the Odin-based ones to be part of the Switch 2, and I know they haven't exactly announced that, but, like, that's like a, yeah, duh, like, what, what else are they gonna do if they wanna keep compatibility with the Switch 1? Uh, they don't make games for the Switch dependent on the touchscreen. Uh, that is true. Except for Clubhouse games. That's like the only one. But... Like, games can utilize that. I'm really not having a fun time with this up here, am I? Um, games can utilize that touchscreen, and you'll find that there's a good number of games where the touchscreen actually works when it should. Like, even though you can just use the buttons, it's like... Eh, tap the screen. You can pick some menu options. Not every game, and certainly uh, most people will figure out that since most games don't, there's not really any point in worrying about it too much. Uh, okay, well, I guess we'll do the, the triple jump strat then. Cause, or, yeah. Because it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit too, too far for that, so. Oops. Oops. They don't make games, they have touchscreen do things only touchscreen do. Except for Clubhouse games. And, uh, Brain Age.
Brain Age is the only game I know that even utilizes that infrared sensor that's on the right Joy-Con, by the way. <laughs> what a weird feature. It's just chilling there. It's just... Yeah, yeah. Infrared sensor, why not? Uh, but like, yeah, I, I mean, I do agree that consoles should be that. The only problem is that obviously you are putting, like, costs into hardware and you're really hoping that game devs use it. And a lot of game devs these days, because it sort of comes back to the developers, a lot of game devs these days, while they do like the Switch, Come on, come on. I gotta do like some kicks to get up there. Nintendo doesn't encourage devs to use it, and devs want their games to be able to play. Yeah, yeah, there's that. Um, see Rayman Legends as the example of Nintendo basically giving up on that. Uh, because when Rayman Legends, the supposed, you know, highly anticipated launch title, decides to postpone its release by nine months just so that the devs can strip out the Wii U exclusive functionality. Oh, okay. We're up here. Not, 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 not bad, bad. We're good. Okay. I'm just gonna just walk it. There we go. First try. First try. They even put a one-up up here. Just for me. <laughs> Which was worse, this or the snowball? Here we go! Again, the DS version added a power flower there <laughs> to help you up. Yeah, uniform consoles... Because uh, on the other hand, it is good for the consumer that no matter what piece of hardware they buy, lots of games work on all that hardware. Exclusives are important, but I think it's, it's, sorry, not exclusives. First party software is important because I think Microsoft is making that okay. They're doing okay with that. Like the Xbox is just like this piece of hardware. It's like, it's fine. In the same way that Sony is releasing games on PC now. Um, so uh, how do you do this? You gotta, first of all, go downstairs, grab the, the, um, that one block that you may have seen. I love this like little little trap door there as well, because that's right above the pit. So grab this, you'll turn invisible, and then you gotta go through that picture. Get enough time to go through that picture. Um I yeah, I don't think I have a great solution other than I do wish there were novel kinds of hardware. I guess yeah, VR is sort of like that. Where it's like different VR headsets had different games. So once you head in here, there's a big eye. Like a really big one. Uh, spin around him again. And then he uh, spits out a star. And that's it! It's fine, but it loses the magic. Yeah. I don't know if I 100% want to go back to the old console space. Um, because it was a very different time. Like, again, Mario 64 is a very, very, you know, unique game. It's made for that specific hardware. It leverages a lot of functionality that wasn't really in games at the time. And even then, you can spot a lot of games where it's like, compare a Nintendo 64 version and a uh, PlayStation version. And occasionally there's a Saturn version, but also sometimes it was the Dreamcast because the Dreamcast was around for more of the Nintendo 64's lifespan than uh, the Saturn. And uh, it's like, yeah, like the PlayStation was always a struggle console. The PlayStation was always a struggle, like, from 98 onwards. It was like, oh, oh, we're trying our best. But it had such an insane install base, game devs went for it. And you also had a lot of games really be really good on that console. Like, uh, Tony Hawk 2 is a very, very great example of that. Um, despite having a Dreamcast version, and despite having a Nintendo 64 version. Um, Nowadays, I think that game devs uh, aren't really going to go through the effort if all the consoles were doing some wildly different stuff. The Switch is already sort of that. Like, you do have to design it for a low-power ARM system, which is a bit more work than Compile One's literally PS5, Xbox Series, and PC all in one go. Like, the Switch is a little more involved. 
But the Switch is... Like, it's not exotic, because it's just an Android tablet. Just to put an example forth... I'm just, uh, meandering around, by the way, because I... Uh, I'll end the stream shortly after this, uh, topic, but yeah. Maybe we can go get Mips the Rabbit downstairs. Uh, Harry Potter 1 had five different games, about seven different platforms, and I've played three of them on stream! And I... I've yet to do the GBA and the PS2 game. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy is gone for about eight platforms, and it's the same game on all of them, yeah, yeah. The Harry Potter 1 one is very curious, because I don't know of that many other games that had so many different versions. There are games that had different versions, um, for example, uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. You would think PC, but no, it's literally the PS2 version is different to all the other ones. Uh, this is Mips, by the way, he has a star from Bowser, and, uh, he's just down here, and he only appears when you have 15 stars. And then you can use him to glitch through the game and, uh, beat it real quick. They don't need to make the versions, but the fact they did makes it special, and I just make one big game. To be fair, in the same console generation, they made one big game. You see the Harry Potter and the, uh, Gobble of the Fire. I mean, oh, I guess the GBA had its own version. Uh, also, this is Hazy Maze Cave, but if you head over here, there's a toad here. And this toad will also just casually... ...give you a star. You just have to talk to him, he's just there. It, it is novel to have games. Yeah, the Freestar Toad. There's a second Freestar Toad later in the game as well, but we can't get him now. But, uh, yeah, no, I think that's, um... That's a pretty good place to end it. We've got five worlds entirely done. Uh... And yeah, really, like, once you go into Hazy Maze Cave, you can get the last power-up and then you don't need to backtrack at all. The backtracking really only exists for, like, Big Bruce Haunt here, maybe. And, uh, bob -on Battlefield with the wing cap. You don't really need, you don't really need to backtrack for too much of this game, so. we still got tons of levels ahead of us, um, on a bittersweet note of losing the Magic of Games. The Magic of Games isn't lost. It may still exist in Astro Bot. It may still exist in other games like, uh, Tears of the Kingdom I had a great time, for example. Uh, Dragon Quest XI I had a great time, for example. There's lots of games out there. I think it's more that, like, uh, games media focuses, uh, not really on the ones that give you a lot of joy, and there's not a lot of, like, game developers don't make as many games, uh, these days. And so when they do release one that's like that, it feels special, but, uh, few and far between now. Ninten yeah, Nintendo's always great, but, um, yeah, it, it depends. It does depend. Um, it's somewhat still there in the indie scene, but indie is different, but it depends. Um, but also, you know, we're, we're in a wonderful age of game preservation. You can just, like, sneeze and your computer will magically manifest uh, Mario 64. You know, like... If, if you have never played these games, and, and, and especially, I'll, I'll, I'll tie back to Mario 64. If you've never played Mario 64, then you should go out and play it. You should find a way to play it. You know, if it's on the Nintendo 64 online, it's on uh, Mario All-Stars on the Switch. Things like things move at a fast pace for decades. I mean, we're, we're experiencing, we're about to enter a crunch, like, that that's gonna happen. Um, it's just a matter of when do people realize that we're in a crunch. And then that will accelerate things. Um, I briefly wanted to mention as well, there was a, um, a, a blog post from Ubisoft saying we know people are upset because we turned off the Crew 1 servers. Rest assured, we do not want to do that for the Crew 2 and, and the Crew Motorsport. Motorsport came out last year, I don't know why they're mentioning that. But like, we're not, we don't, we're not doing that for the Crew 2 anytime soon. And we want to figure out ways to get offline support working, which is great if you can do that, Ubisoft, because you've just said it. Just doesn't mean you've done it, uh, and also doesn't mean you can. Well, doesn't mean you've undone the crew one, but like a lot of people are so upset about this that they are not buying Ubisoft's other games, myself included. I am actively not buying things like Watch Dogs 2, which are on sale, because I'm like Ubisoft's just going to pull this stunt on me, and suddenly my game will disappear again. 
like I'm upset about this. I'm one of these people. And I think their investors are spotting this and going, oh, and they're like, oh, we'll do something about that. But like, I'm not in Europe, so I can't sign the petition. But uh, I think we had something in Australia about uh, digital ownership and like what's going on there. It's a complex issue because releasing server software is not the easiest thing. Uh, case in point, I'm going to make the Clone Hero example, but they use a library called Rewired. You need to pay for your for development versions of Rewired. It's, you can't just, I mean, they do release server software, but like what I mean is that like, there's lots of game software that's got licenses to lots of technologies that they just can't release for free. Like you would need to buy those licenses in order to be able to use that for your use cases. Um, now that being said, they can easily, well, not easily, they can put in the effort to not use this license technology. And you can get to the point where you could GPL your whole code if you really, really, really didn't have dependencies and you can actually make it all really work out like that. Um, but a lot of these games do use extra technologies. You can't just easily outsource, or sorry, you open source your game because your game is only a part of your whole program at this point. Licensing might be the biggest enemy to on software. Um, I mean, it has to exist for certain reasons, but like that's the reason why, um, you know, I make my videos G uh, GPL. A lot of my code is um, GPL, um, where it's like, I am perfectly fine with, if I make it out for free, I really do want people to share it. I really want people, as long as things are attributed, I think lots of things can happen and flourish. Um, obviously, people need to make money, but then we get into this problem of, well, if you don't make any money, no one wants to do it. And if you make tons of money, no one can do it. And we're currently wildly pivoting between these two angles. <laughs> where it's like, people do not make some money anymore. Some money doesn't exist. It's either you don't make any money, you have to do stuff for free, you have to put your name out like that, or you are making insane amounts of money as a business. <laughs> Just in general, just in general, this is this is the thing. Uh, that's what I mean with the crunch, because it's like I, things are going to stagnate so hard when it becomes like this. Piracy makes them more. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that. But you have to enforce piracy right now. Like, if you don't enforce piracy, sorry, it's right. If you if you don't enforce rules against piracy and your property against piracy. You sort of relinquish your right to, you know, actually protect your your use. Like that's that's the reason why they do really crack down on it, and also sometimes because you can get millions of dollars from a certain company if they just so happen to have millions of dollars. I do not have millions of dollars. Like, I want myself in the same boat. Lots of individuals do not have millions of dollars. You have to be fairly noteworthy. Uh, stupid law. Yeah, no, there are some real stupid laws, and copyright is not very well written for the digital age even with things like the digital millennium copyrights act uh which i still ex really really hate that one article that one section of it that basically goes is it section 230 is that the one uh which is basically like you cannot reverse engineer stuff if they added safeguards against it uh yeah D D well dmca is um yeah, in, in terms of YouTube is a, is a very weird one, but like, yeah, like, if if I add copy protection into my game, you cannot circumvent copy protection, or you cannot reverse engineer copy protection. It's very loosely written, so circumvention may potentially be legal, but people don't want to find that out. <laughs> um, so it's like, say for example, you have a game, and the hardware requires like a BIOS, and the BIOS requires security keys. If you created a high-level execution environment that just ran the game directly without going through a BIOS, in theory, you are illegally allowed to do that. Like, that's fine. But the moment you try to reverse engineer the BIOS, you are apparently breaking the law. Like, that, I do not get that at all. That is, that is just a baffling law, I swear. So, um, yeah, DMCA abuse is insane, although that's also YouTube being a problem. The, the act is fine, in terms of like if you own property you can take someone to court over it 
The problem is that many websites don't want to bother with going to court, so they let people self-declare that, hey, this is a thing, and they will act on it. And on a content platform that's insanely user-generated, uh, well, sorry, it has so much user-generated content, they need to have automated tools to allow people to do this en masse. And then you run into this whole abuse situation where people can just claim, like, freaking, like, anything. Someone claimed a, a, um, a single image of Buckethead, like, on his own, and then, like, copyright claimed so many people who had Buckethead music and got the ad money for that. And it's like, what is going on here? Like, he's not Buckethead. There's no, there's no proof to the system. That is YouTube's problem, and that is something that, like, as an advertiser or as any kind of content creator, I'm like, I would just really, I mean, it's always dangerous territory saying that, like, uh, you know, <laughs> I release things to YouTube and I am on a YouTube partner program in the sense of I get revenue from, like, a dollar a month of advertising money, so it's not like, I'm not upset if I lose that, but it's just like, yeah, like, YouTube does have problems. YouTube does have massive problems with this system, and YouTube can put itself in the position to pioneer getting it right. Um, reminds me of the Magic Gate situation with the Sony stuff, particularly uh, PCSX2, no accountability, the service is not punished or reprimanded for the mistakes, it's just expected of you to shut up and bear it, kind of like I am Um... Well, the thing, I mean, the thing with YouTube is that they have, because it used to be actually when you got claims, you were like dead. Your channel was basically like, yeah, you're at the mercy of it. Um, now it is at the point where they will facilitate the discussion enough between the two parties and then allow them to directly sue each other and take them to court. Um, the, the iffy part is that uh, if you're suing someone like that, you then have to also go, oh, but they're not, they may not be in the, like, that country, and therefore, YouTube's in a bit of a weird place where, like, suddenly they need to somehow accept other countries' laws. Um, no, they just shoot you in the leg and call an ambulance. Yeah, um, the, the biggest problem is at the end of, um, that whole process, in order to file the like, yes, this is really, really me, um, the suing party, which is the, the person making the claim, has to then be able to sue you, which means you need to provide them with your legal name and, a, uh, and an address for them to be able to sue you at. And never, I rarely, rarely, rarely see people actually get sued at that point. Like, you know, you know you goofed when, you, when you're at that point. Um, and, like, you're not certain. But, like, people take it all the way to the end, you put that info in, if you do, and then they go, oh, I'll wait, like, four weeks, and I've already gotten, like, four weeks of ad money. No one wants to give out that private info. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's, that's the biggest problem. This happened to, um, uh, Iron Mouse, like, a couple of weeks ago. Her VOD channel got taken down three strikes by just the same person, back to back, and was like, oh, you could counterclaim them, but you would need to give your personal information. You can't even go through a, a, a lawyer or anything. You have to give your personal information. And she's like, that's not worth it. Like, that's an insane system. And you should, you really, you really, 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 especially as someone who is a partner of YouTube, you should be able to have a human to consult for copyright reasons as an agent, as someone to help assist the process. But the highest copyright, sorry, the highest, like, partners are bound to the system where they have to go through this automated process and do the parties directly. YouTube is just, like, completely hands-off, despite the fact that, like, people are claiming stuff in your system that's false. You could, uh, like, you could, I don't know, opine, it is your platform. Cost too much money? Hey, you know, it probably will be there. The only thing that will, you know, convince YouTube otherwise is if there were a better platform. And unfortunately, VidMe shut down because that stuff costs way too much. Video platforms are very expensive. Um, YouTube is a loss leader. Like, it exists purely because it gets more Google advertising money and more people consuming content on the internet. Uh, TikTok was a threat. TikTok, unfortunately, 
isn't perfect, and it still doesn't really, you know, TikTok's not there for, for long-form content like this, so... <laughs> I can't, I can't jump to it, but I am certainly of the opinion of like, A, if I could self-host my own videos and Discovery was alright, and uh, I had the bandwidth to do this because Australian internet sucks, um, it's actually not too bad, but like, my upload speeds are woefully slower than my download, and there's no option to get around that. Um, I mean... <sighs> Some companies do really do believe that they're making an impact, but maximizing profits is certainly like the most important part. I'm gonna try and do the MIPS hit right now. I'm just gonna give it some attempts. Is MIPS still here or did I just despawn him? He should still be chilling. Yeah, he should still be chilling there. That's this fun thing you can do with a MIPS, by the way, if you're if you're pro enough. And that is uh, if you can walk up to this door, you can crouch. And they would be in the door. You then have to somehow uh, angle yourself just right to grab MIPS. But sometimes you're just not quite right, so you just gotta keep trying it. Um, I don't think Personal Spike comes up like that much, to be fair. There's too many people in the world to like have Personal Spite. Um, I do think a lot of businesses are passionate enough about their product. Uh, I worry that like, you know, YouTube and other kinds of big content platforms lose track of exactly why they are big, and that's because they are a big video site with great reliability and content creators who produce stuff ex exclusively for them. That, like, that's why other content sites, uh, like, um, Rumble have, and Odyssey have done alright, because there's actually been people who make content exclusively for those places. Hey, there you go. So if you crouch now, I put MIPS on this side. Uh, this one's probably going to be a bit moot because I've already got enough stars to actually open this door here. Um, but uh, if you do the same thing over here, this one's a little easier, but you can actually get MIPS hard trapped. There you go. Look at that. Didn't you have to open the door? And you're on the other side, except I've opened the door <laughs> anyways because... I've opened it from the back, but like, yeah, if you didn't have enough stars, you could use this MIP skip at 15 stars to get in here. Then you would need to get this first star in order to push this wall back, which I'll do in the next stream. And then you can go in the pit, and then uh, you can fight Bowser number two, and then there's a way to get up to Bowser number three without getting any more stars. That's how you do the skips. <laughs> I'm glad I got the MIP skip without needing to even look it up, so that's all good. Anyways, I've been rambling for a bit. I think it's good to call it there, so thank you all so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this stream, or you didn't enjoy this stream, or uh, you uh, liked me finicking around with controls at the very, very beginning, you can follow on Twitch. I stream at 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard every Monday, just once a week. It's only once a week, so this time slot again next week. Um, hey, Twitter's a, Twitter's a classic. Twitter's a classic, so... Uh, if you miss parts of this VOD, it'll be on YouTube, um, very, uh, very soon, within 24 hours. Um, obviously as well, you can watch all the other VODs, not of Mario 64, because I just started playing that today, but like, literally like 50 other games. I've been playing, doing streams for like, nearly four years now, which is getting a bit terrifying, but, uh, you can play through a lot of games in, in two hour streams every week, so that's all good. Uh, and you can follow me on the Fetty uh, at m.bnd.com if you want to see some ramblings about some things like Astrobot and uh, how insane the PS5 Pro's pricing is. Um, so that's all good. And the Fetty will always be up. Can't get banned from the Fetty. So, anyways, peace everyone. Stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late. Have a good week. See ya. Not the Fetty, the Fetty. <laughs> it's very similar. See ya.